Hello, everybody. Hi. How's it going? Welcome back to Rogue Trader the Breach. Our first official session. Unfortunately, we are missing McLoken because he has ditched us for like some kind of live wrestling thing. I don't know. It's whatever. Um, but yeah, we are here. We're having some fun. Um, I guess we'll just do some quick roundtable introductions and jump right into everything. I get a spaceship today. I'm really excited. Okay. Um, let's start with Sheepy, who is our GM. Hello. I am Sheepdog. I am the GM. It's nice to meet you all. <laughs> Lol. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Sheepy. That's fantastic. I really appreciate your input. Okay, how about Bobby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, guys? I'm Bobby. I stream on Twitch sometimes. Can't wait to play. I'm excited to get started. And uh, yeah, let's do this. Heck yeah. How about Allie? Hi, I'm Allie. Uh, I'm mostly cosplayer and digital artist, and I'm very new to the streaming thing, and I'm very, very excited to start. So. How's that? Shibi. Nope, I'm just kidding. We already did you. You don't get another what? one. Huh? Shibi. <laughs> you almost skip me for Shibi? Again? I just wanted to play tricks on him. <laughs> uh, I'm Crazy Baby 69. Um, I'm playing an orc. Be fun. Yes. Uh, I am Metamancer. I am, this is my channel. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, um, yeah, that's also my channel, I guess. Um, anyway, I will be playing the Rogue Trader of the campaign. I do not have a name yet, so that's going to be fun. I'm probably going to use a name generator. Oh, so. I should have used like, <laughs> so that name, huh? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I want to have a really weird name, but I couldn't come up with anything. We do have a name at this point in time for our ship, though. Void Fang was the recommended, well, like the winning recommended one. Uh, but if there are other suggestions, I'm open to considering. But I really like Void Fang. I think it's a badass yeah. piratey ship name, so... It's going to take a lot to persuade me to a different name. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into things. Let's get a quick intro from Sheepy about like the general gist of the campaign and where we're starting off. And then we'll jump into characters and whatever whatever we get into, we'll get into. Okay. Um, so, we start off the campaign in a small sector on the fringes of Imperium space. Uh, the Rogue Trader and the characters are all centered around the a station, kind of a Wayfarer station, uh, called Slaghale, which is run by a lapsed Rogue Trader family, uh, the McEwans. Uh, if you need the name for that, I will chuck it in the chats. There you go. And for you guys, um, there have recently been rumors of a opening in a warp storm, which has possibly opened up a new sector of space with new worlds to explore, to discover, and to plunder. Um, word has reached Rogue Trader. <laughs> Um, who has decided to investigate it with her newly acquired ship uh, after the death of a family member who um, was head of the Rogue Trader family. The uh, Rogue Trader uh, warrants of trade have been passed down, everything's been made official, and a month or so ago um, the ship was taken into possession. Uh, the Void Fang is a retrofitted ship for close combat and boarding actions, primarily. Um, the weapons on it are mostly short range with a few like longer lance uh, weapons for the longer range pursuits. And it has been filled out with a small contingent of orcs um, who, through contacts in the Rogue Trader family were uh, signed on and currently aside from looking for uh, leads and rumors regarding the breach uh, Rogue Trader 
Do we have a name yet? <laughs> I'm gonna name generator this. Hold on, hold on. All the right. infamous uh, rogue trader lady. Uh, <laughs> until we have it. Um, I mean, you should totally go with the title of lady. Yeah. Uh, lady. Delta Nickass. <laughs> Um, Delta's not bad. Nick ass. I, like, I like Delta, but the Rogue Trader family Nick ass is a little bit. <laughs> they smell a bit. Uh, yeah. Mick Trader face. Uh, best. I can go with best. No, I'm just kidding. Number one. Um, well, I'm just generating. Why can't I generate more? Give me 50 names at a time, sons of bitches. Give me 200. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, there's. I've got Fleek here as a lot of Fleek, thing. on Fleek. Um, nope, we're definitely <laughs> not doing that one. Uh, I kind of like North, but that's because like it's super generic and easy. Um, uh, da, 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 da. These are all terrible last names. Ugh. Lickfelt. No. Really? <laughs> no, that's horrible. Are you guys using a 40k name generator? Yeah. Or... I mean, oh, I looked at 40k looked name the, generator? Uh, I've... I've got man hack. No. <laughs> Horrible. Where's the generator? Um, 40k name generator. Um That's like Space Marines and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sisters Battle and stuff. Well, Sisters Battle could be interesting. If you yeah. Get uh, but it doesn't give me last names, it's only giving me first names. Mm -hmm. Um I need something that I'll remember. These some of these names are not not easy to remember. How about Morn? M O R N. Delta Morn. Okay, I like that one. Let's go with that. Okay. We Sorry, found a name. I can't believe you didn't go with Manhack or Asnik. Shut up. <laughs> Is it with an E at the end or just M O R N? M O R N, yeah. But if you want an E on the end, you know, it's... No, it's no, no, this is fine. An E on the end seems a little, like... You know... Yeah. Totally. <laughs> a little bit fleek. Yeah, a little bit <laughs> fleek. So, uh, the Morn... I'm oh, sorry, I've lost my place of where I was. Um, the Morn family um, ship was inherited by uh, Delta Morn about a month ago. Uh, due to the Morn family collect connections, uh, Delta managed to arrange a casual contract with uh, an orc contact they had, who has since joined the ship in the engine room, or close to the engine room, I believe. Mm -hmm. da down, in the, down in the bowels of the ship. Yeah. Um, along with that, uh, I believe you signed on an astropath, uh, who is Ophelia Vectra, um, cause no rogue trader ship should be without an astropath. Uh, if you could roll me a d10 as well, um, Meta. That would be a two. Uh, yeah. along with... Along with Ophelia Vectra comes her contingent of uh, astropaths. Uh, the astropathic choir is uh, two other people. Cool. Uh, I will leave that to you, uh, Ali, how you, you know, whether you want them to be like, you know, a couple of friends who, get, who you know, you met while you were, or if you want them to be like subordinates who work for you kind of thing. Okay. You could be twi you could be triplets if you like. <laughs> uh, I think one of me is enough. <laughs> yeah. um, so yes, uh, coming onto this station, uh, Delta, you are not only looking for ways to get into the uh, get through the breach. Uh, as previously mentioned in the character creation, the breach is almost like a. Um, almost like a large fortress or wall with a gap in it, uh, with massive ancient defenses, and it's the only way into the sector. 
So you can warp close to it, but you actually have to fly through it to get through. There's there's no no known warp route right. forward or back. And attempts to warp through have been uh, catastrophic, to say the least. Um, there are rumors that someone on the station has a way through, a small gap, um, a breach in the wall that will, uh, if flown correctly, allow you to get through without being targeted or destroyed. And you are also on the search for any new crew members to fill out your positions needed, uh, especially a navigator is, uh, is necessary to make this trip. Um, so I imagine we come into the bridge with uh, Rogue Trader, Delta Morn, uh, Orc Freebooter Extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, I just need to Grimfist Grot Hammer, who I am going to continually call. Who I am continually going to call Grothama when I look at it, <laughs> um, and Ophelia Vectra, along with a, along with kind of an assortment of, um, along with like an assortment of officers and petty officers, people who do the general running of a ship. Some of them are going around checking the systems, you know, making sure everything's good. Um, and of course, uh, Ophelia Vectra, you'd be there. Probably not with your astropathic choir. Um, question for Delta. Do you have like a advisory council yet? Or are you still kind of working out the kinks of that? I'm probably still working. I'm, I'm like, again, I'm the t more like the worst rogue trader. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm totally winging it. Um, okay. And she's just like she's just trusting that things will work themselves out and that they can get themselves out of whatever situation so i think as far as advisors go she probably like got some general information from her family she's like yeah sure whatever i'll deal with it when i deal with it yeah. very very <laughs> like just nonchalant about everything um so so, so probably a little hands off leaving the general running of the ship to the crew members who are already here yeah pretty much and who um who was the previous rogue trader like obviously a family member are we talking like an uncle a grandfather hmm. great grandfather even like the longevity of rogue traders can be right you know, so, so. Um, that's a good question. Definitely somebody that's farther removed. Yeah. Um, why don't we go with like a great aunt instead? A great aunt? Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, a ship that's used to uh, matriarchy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. Uh, you guys are in here. Uh, you've been, you, you've gone through like the kind of, kind of general welcome, all this kind of stuff that a road trader receives. Usually with a little more pomp and ceremony, but you you probably haven't really noticed that it's not massively enthusiastic. Kind of like, oh, Lord Road Trader, welcome, welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, you uh, you guys are, are free to decide what you'd like to do next. The station is fairly large. It is usable as a refitting station. Um, repairs are possible to your ship. Not that you need anything uh, in terms of repairs. And there are general kind of... Um, large uh, stockpiles that you can purchase from this kind of thing of course there is the kind of main main uh area where the road the uh, yeah, sorry lapsed road trade uh, family lives mm -hmm. which you are expected to go and visit but you don't have to go straight there um lots of different uh areas where people live and drink and fight and all these kind of things as well so you can uh, you can head straight to the road trader. You can go and ask around. You can try and you know 
look for recruits and specialists or anything along those lines. So do I have the full party on the ship right now? Uh, you do not have a uh, Bobby, also okay. known as uh, Marius Acteon, if I spell that. If I right, that. Marius. Okay. Um, so you do require a navigator. Right. You would know the best place to ask about that. Would okay. Be the trader family. Okay. Cool. Um, I guess I'd have to go and get that because I don't know what the hell I'm doing with the ship. So. Um... Go. So that kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah, this has been kind of running itself, but we're we're at a point where it's like, yeah, probably. I bet you, like some of the crew that have been on there for a while, like, are you ever going to get a navigator or what? Like, it's been mm, been one there, of those. There has been a, a, a couple of the uh, a couple of the higher ranking uh, yeah. ratings, like shipmen, have been saying, you know, yeah, rogue trader, rogue trader Morn, we desperately need a navigator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Traveling finally, she's the she's all like, "All right, fine. We'll get out of this place. We're going to get her anyway." Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, so yeah, I think that we would go. I'd probably, um, I'd probably motion for Ophelia to come with her because she doesn't like to like go to ports on her own. Um, yeah. Mostly because she's just, Ophelia. <laughs> yeah, mostly she's just freaked out by most people because they're weird and. If she has somebody else that's weird, like an astropath with her, it's just like evens it out. It's fine. Thanks. Ophelia, weird? Never. Thanks. Yeah, no, I mean, she's, she's, she's gonna be weird. Yeah. Oh, believe me. She's yeah. gonna be weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah. I would assume not the orc with you. I was gonna say, would it be really weird to bring the orc with us? And I feel like the answer is yes. Um, if... It depends. How backwater is this station? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> It, it's a rogue trader run station. It's not completely under the domain of the Imperium. It's a little bit of a kind of um, a gray area in terms of law. Um, I think if you sent in a request, you could probably get dispensation to bring a bodyguard with you of Xenos Origins. Okay. So it would, yeah, like um, if you if you if you send out uh, a runner or make a communicate quickly over Vox, then yeah, you could you could totally make it okay. valid. Would probably still get some weird looks and stuff. Yeah. But then again, people wouldn't do much against an right. orc and an path, So. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I just fucked up my roll twenty. Would you like to take all of the astropaths with you? Eh. Uh. Probably not. Leave the other two. Probably just take the Ophelia with me. So are we going to assume that we're like pretty close then? Because I like tend to go everywhere with you. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So like, Uh, so I would say we've probably known each other for a few years, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, right on. Well, in that case, um... Guess we'll go over to where I can find info on navigators. Okay. I think that's probably the most appropriate. So you want to head straight over and uh, request an audience with the station? Probably. Mayor, I guess, is the word yeah. we use. Okay. Um, so uh, you travel through, and, you know, again, you probably take an entourage of, like, uh, Ten or so guards. Okay. Um, well, it it would be encouraged by the officers. You don't have to because obviously you are in charge, so you right. can just tell them to fuck off. But um, yeah, man, I feel like she would just tell them to fuck off. But has she ever been to this station before? No, this is this is new, and you have no previous connections with the McEwans either. Okay. So. Um, she'd probably take an extra detail, like maybe two or three additional people, but she kind of like, she trusts, like, the people that she's with, right? So, I mean, like, yeah. especially Grimfist, she's like, if anything happens, it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <Okay. laughs> like, let's say so, we'll, we'll take a compliment of three, not ten, definitely not ten. Well, do you, do you just want a couple of, like, uh... The, the more kind of 
muscly, intimidating looking yeah, probably. bodyguard types and just have them, you know, like probably probably fully decked out in the best armor you have on the ship. Yeah. And like I'd say probably shotguns, most likely, you know, like fairly yeah. something along those lines and just uh walk inside uh, on both sides of your group as kind of like deterrence. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, Grimfist and Ophelia, you guys probably would have interacted a fair amount. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I would say, Grimfist, I imagine you've been on the ship for a couple of months since Ophelia organized the contract and got the mm -hmm. ship and everything. Uh, so, yeah, you, you guys would have acquaintance with each other before. Um, as two members of the more inner circle of the Rogue Trader, you've been there discussing tactics, you know, where you want to go, where the best place to find these rumors are. Um, possibly due to your uh, background, actually, Ophelia, you may have had the idea to come here. So, okay. um, because, because the McEwans are lapsed and were never very reputable, you may have had dealings with them in the past before you joined all of this group. Okay. Um, so that's going to be your in, uh, is that you have some connections, you can kind of vouch for the people coming forward. Uh, so you guys proceed through fairly slummy areas. You know, they're not... They're not rusted and moldy and, you know, like, bodies on the streets. But they're kind of grimy. Um, people don't look like they're living in splendor or anything like that. And the, the whole station seems fairly poor and under-equipped. They can still manage to outfit ships with basic resources and repairs, but you're not going to find, I don't know, for example, a teleportarium here to install in your ship. Um, you make your way to the kind of large central dome, almost, which um, there are a couple of guards on, on, on the doors there, but you're expected, you're waved straight through, no waiting. Uh, these are the benefits of being a rogue trader, is it's very difficult to bar the door to a rogue trader. Because if, if someone says, you know, yeah, you and whose army, you can point to your ship with literally an army on there. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe your ship has about 23,000 crew members. Yeah, I think it was about that much. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, obviously to run the ship properly, you need a good portion of them, but you could easily, you, you could easily get a uh, a thousand, two thousand equipped and armed. They wouldn't be soldiers, mm -hmm. but they'd be enough to be a threat to basically anyone. Yeah. Um, once you get inside the dome, you realize that the you realize that the the air is clearer here. It's easier to breathe. Okay. Um, it feels a bit more rich, a, a bit more opulent. Because you're part of a rogue trader family, you've seen proper opulence. Like, your family is not poor. Right. Um, and you have rubbed shoulders with rich and powerful families, both imperial families and other rogue trader families. This... Let's, let's, get, a, let's get a roll, shall we? <laughs> okay. Um, let us go with... I think we'll just go up with a straight awareness. Oh, uh, actually, let's go with uh, Imperium Law uh, with a plus 20. Oh, cool. Just because this is something you're very familiar with. Yeah. 20. Oof. Wow. What did I roll? You rolled a 92. Oh. That's nice. Nice almost crit fill. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... I'm clueless. It's fine. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it, like, it's it's one of those things, like, you see loads of uh, rich families and things, you don't pay attention, it's just yeah. general everyday life for you. This place seems like they're trying, so, you know, they're probably rich as well, who knows. 
Would would I know maybe a little bit more about it because I'm familiar with the place? Uh, do you think you'd have rubbed shoulders with like rich road traders on the regular? I don't know. <laughs> um, um, I will say, seeing as you've been around the uh, seeing as you've been around road trader Morn for a fair while, uh, roll me a. Let's have a look at what we've got here. I'd say roll me a straight up awareness. So just uh, awareness, no modifiers. So that's a. Uh, what is that? <laughs> so that's a three. Um, we have rolled a 92 and a 3 in our first two rolls. This is going to be an interesting campaign. Um, <laughs> so it's a 3 yeah. bad Remember good? I said mm -hmm. I was a really bad rogue trader, okay? Yes. I prerequisite this. <laughs> Luckily, you have amazing subordinates. Um, That's three, how I win. A, a, a 1 is basically a critical success. I would say okay. anything from a 5 or below, I will consider pretty much a critical success. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, um, this place is clearly trying to look opulent and rich, but you've seen actual opulent and rich rogue traders. This place is trying, but failing. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's fallen into disrepair. It's very clearly not a successful rogue trader house. Okay. So... Prob prob like look look it looking around, it looks kind of nice ish, but it's not impressive. Mm -hmm. And uh, I imagine you probably whisper that to uh, yeah. mm -hmm. being like, this place sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Just, this place is trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seems fine to me. <laughs> Speaking about trash, I'm really just looking around to see how good of scrap in this place is how good for scrap in this place is. All right, um, yeah, let's let's see whether you roll a 92 or a three. Um, roll me, I think it's just, it's gonna be I've got to get back into the, uh, into the rogue trader and not, uh, tech use, I think. I don't think there's a straight up tech skill. I think it's just tech use. So it'd be just intelligence. Uh, do you not have the tech use skill? Shouldn't you start with that? I do, but I... I don't know if I didn't fucking... Oh, I guess I should have loaded, put it into the skill thing. And it, and yeah. It if, if, you, if you just add it into the basic skills, because it starts as a basic trained yeah. skill. Um, I believe that's intelligence, yeah. And, uh, yeah, ticket as well, so... Me, if I sucked, I ain't nothing for scrapping here. Well, yeah, you know, it's it's fairly close. So you know, like it, it doesn't look appealing to you. You can't think of anything specifically you could turn it into, but you could probably make something of it. Me, it's much a humid junk it is. Too smooth, not enough, not enough red. Gotta go a bit faster. And. Uh, Yes. So you guys head towards, uh, and you are you're brought into a room of probably it's probably the nicest looking room or place you've seen so far on the station. Very clearly meant to receive important guests. Uh, you are left there by a couple of guards. Um, you are asked to leave your guards outside. Just you know. Um, if you're if if you're accepting of that, it's up to you. Uh, the orcs fine. They're, it's kind of counted as, as your entourage. The orcs fine. The guards are too much though. Well, no, it's 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 kind of it's kind of uh, the 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 person on guard kind of. I think the guards would stop you as you come to the room, and a a kind of officious looking clerk type would say. Uh, um, 
rotate a morn. It is perfectly acceptable for you to bring your uh, advisors, your entourage in with you. We would, however, ask that you leave your guards here as sensitive topics of conversation may be discussed and we only trust those that you yourself would trust. We could move them into a different room and give them a drink, I suppose. Okay. Uh, I'm gentlemen, gonna snarl me. and snap at him just for fun. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I've been working for a rogue trader for a while. I'm used to seeing some strange things. Um, yes. If you will go in and please, uh, I'm sure uh, the rogue trader will be. Well, I'm sure the station manager will be able to see you soon. And. Uh, you guys all notice that he kind of stumbles over a rope trader before he... Okay. Yeah, I was muted on stream. Oops. It's fine. I, it's I fine. I've mostly entertain. been talking so far, so... Yeah, I asked him to entertain <laughs> words. It's totally fine. Right. Um, so you guys are left in this room for probably about ten minutes. Not enough to be rude, but enough to be like. Uh, does anyone have uh, laws to do with rogue trader? So any kind of law along the lines of rogue trader, I will accept. I have that. common law war and orcs. No, this this would be more like etiquette. And oh, I know. <laughs> no, I don't think no. so. I have I have common law, forbidden role, lore for psyker, and forbidden lore for war. Okay, that probably not. I just got the Imperium lore. Uh, Imperium would work, uh, just straight up Imperium. Okay. Um, th th that's kind of like all encompassing. So. Oh it hey. Two point one degrees of success. That's nineteen. Um, yeah. So this this is this is something you've seen. Uh, just in 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 important meetings, this kind of thing. It's a little bit of a power play. It's a an inferior trying to push their luck without actually trying to offend the person who's much more powerful than them. Yeah. Um, it's petty and it, it's a little bit annoying. How you take it is up to you. Yeah. I, I think I would just uh, like lean over to Ophelia and be like, I think he's compensating for something. Making us wait like 10 minutes. How Let's... big is his room? Uh it's a fairly large room. It's um, probably about three orcs high and maybe 50 orcs wide. <laughs> <laughs> Measurement via orcs. <laughs> I mean, it's fitting, really. Um, I'm going to go message for the light fixture just because it looks shiny. All right, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, uh, are you sure you should be doing that? What? Uh, uh, it's fine. Uh, Okay. I'll just turn it to the game. It probably sucks anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, roll me a tech use. <laughs> tech use. <laughs> Gotta get it to tech use. <laughs> Boom. Barely a degree to success. Yep. yep. <laughs> if, if, if you'd have failed, all the lights would have went off in the building. <laughs> Sorry, quick question. Don't mean to interrupt, but how do you see the actual number? Just hover your mouse over the highlighted number. So yeah, if you hover, I see a bunch of numbers. <laughs> so if you hover over the 0.1, you can see there is a larger number in brackets. That is the number. So 30 is what uh, Hippie rolled there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I see. It's like the one of the last numbers. Yeah, I rolled a 30 okay. out of 31. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. the one that's between the word uh, span and then the, the in the brackets, next to the brackets. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so you have a few minutes if you would like to discuss things among yourselves to uh, talk about anything. Uh, if not, we can go straight to the uh, rogue trader finally showing up. Yeah, I think that's fine. Just unless you guys wanted to talk about anything. Oh, just how stupid Yumi's is. It's all. <laughs> well, you know I'm a Yumi, right? Oh, we, we use a tougher, stronger human. Hughes has proven yourself. I don't know why we're talking even more humans. Okay, thanks. I feel better. 
and the rogue trader. Um, I don't believe you've been introduced, but you assume he's a member of the McCowan family. Uh, big double doors, very clearly probably paused there for a second to like straighten his clothes and, you know, and then the doors like open together in a very kind of impressive way. Um, let's just see how impressive this yeah. is. Yeah, it's actually quite impressive. It's not too bad. <laughs> I think it's um, definitely compensating though, still. So. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> he, he has uh, he has kind of uh, uh, official robes of some of some type. Um, for anyone who'd like to roll me a scrutiny. Yeah, I'm terrible at it, but I'm going to totally roll it. Sure. Damn uh, it. I was going to roll for you. But... Oh no, you can you can all roll. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay, I rolled an eighty-five. <laughs> I just assume he looks dumb. Ten. <laughs> wow, you oh, no. rolled a ten. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be one of those campaigns where the yep. main captain is gonna fail at everything. It's gonna be great. Uh, so you, uh, you looking at his clothes again? Uh, they probably were once very impressive. They're a little worn, a little faded. Um, again, dude is trying to compensate for something. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and he walks in with a... Well, why don't you describe yourself, Bobby? Um, <laughs> I am a... Well, first, when you when I walk in, I'm, I'm standing about six foot six feet tall. I'm really tall, really broad. I'm hooded. Uh, I'm wearing, like, black robes adorned with, like, silvers and reds and whites. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of hobbling a little bit and I'm leaning very heavily on a uh, tall golden staff. Uh, on the top there's an eye with an eagle on, on it and it's inlaid with like uh, black marble and uh, I'm, I'm kind of just hobbling in on this and I walk into the room. Um, who do I see in this room? Yeah, um, if you guys would like to give a brief description of your characters, you know, what they look like, etc. Uh, let's start off with the orc, why not? Because... Uh, uh, is the description of him. <laughs> yeah, I'm a seven foot tall, muscle built, apish like monstrosity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an orc. <laughs> uh, teeth, are they impressively long? Or... Uh, yes, I keep my teeth impressively long and shiny. Okay. okay. And do you have uh, any kind of adornments that would for other orcs, mark you as techie or uh, up to that point yet? My my big job is relatively wrench like in most mm. most senses. On of that, you have nothing, an actual like wrench on the end of the basically nothing too flashy. I haven't bothered forging up anything armor wise, so nothing crazy right now. Most of it's just I bop them on the head and they either die or shut up. So <laughs> yeah. And uh, what what clan are you? <laughs> Evil sons. Gotta go so fight. Cool. So yeah, you you got a little bit of red on you. Red uh, and yellow. Think, yeah, red and yellow is the color of the. Uh, Mostly red. <laughs> Mostly red. Um, Ophelia. Um, I'm quite uh, slender, but you can't really see very much. Um, of my figure underneath the kind of long cape that I'm wearing. Um, I'm pretty much wearing all black, very <laughs> goth looking. Yeah. Um, it stands at about 5'7 um, or 5'8. Um, very long, white hair, um, a dark hood with um, a silver kind of pendant adornment uh, in the hood. It has a red gem in the middle mm. um and her eyes are completely white um as many astropaths do have either burnt out or white eyes yeah um is the is the hood covering like down to your face or is it is it kind of framing no out? it's just um just exactly exactly as i'm wearing it so she she's not very uh, like 
she's not scared of like showing her face because it's not as jarring as some astropaths tend to look, yeah. but it's still unsettling to see uh, her eyes completely whited out and especially accented by the very dark makeup. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, is that like, is that almost like a, yeah, I, I got my eyes taken away kind of thing, or is it just you don't, does she not worry about it, or is it more of a like challenge thing? Um, so it depends. Uh, she would be, uh, she doesn't care too much about what people think, but if she wants to intimidate someone, she knows that that is something that people are intimidated by. Yeah. Uh, and Delta. Okay. Right. So. <laughs> She's wearing like this really unkept armor underneath a long, almost duster like trench coat. Um, and she's got unnecessary accessories of things mm. that are probably not useful whatsoever. Uh, okay. But she thinks it makes her look like a badass. So she's got that. She's got purple hair. Um, also, very unkempt. Um, on occasion, she wears a hat, but most of the time, unless she's like on the ship, she 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 won't. Um, and her general posture, she's like she's five ten, so she's actually pretty tall. But her posture is very relaxed and kind of like nonchalant about everything. Um, she doesn't necessarily walk with like the very pompous attitude that some of the other mm. more, you know, nobles would walk with. She's much more relaxed and doesn't really care what people think about her by any means like at all so if i may hazard a guess mm -hmm. i assume that as this rogue trader and uh, navigator walk in what they see is an orc fucking around with the lights <laughs> <laughs> a uh, a slightly shorter uh, astropath transcendent staring at them disconcertingly <laughs> and a unkempt slightly rough looking rogue trader just kind of leaning back in a really long couch with like her legs yeah. kind of you know, like one Definitely. leg over the other. Just yeah, like, and, and me and Delta just like sort of finished whispering with each other. You know? Yeah. No, I'm like, kind of just like staring yeah. at them. <laughs> Delta so, like, would be so, attractive like, if she gave a shit about how she looked. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Well, I mean, you're, you're, it's all hell. You don't need to care about how Yeah, you look. exactly. Um, I imagine like as they, as they do their impressive storm in, you know, like imperious kind of entrance into the room. Probably um, Ophelia is, has just finished like whispering, kind of looking official, official like in Delta's ear, and just kind of straightens up. And there's probably a moment where everyone like takes each other in and just tries to figure out the power dynamics of the room. I win. <laughs> <laughs> aside, aside from obviously the orc. No, I say that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the rogue trader is completely going to ignore that. Yeah. Um, and go and sit down opposite you. There's kind of like a, I'm not going to say a coffee table, but you know, there's there's kind of a, a ornate table yeah. in the center too. And uh, drinks are brought in as well at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, walk in and sit down. Okay. So, oh, yeah. hello. Uh, I am very pleased to be able to welcome a fellow road trader. Uh, my name is Canicus McEwen. Canicus. Um, again, I'll, okay. I'll chuck that down in the chat for you guys. If I just attempted to spell that. <laughs> I wrote can like a can and then they could yeah. oh I was pretty close I forgot the extra n oh I did it I just did um an a instead of an i damn it so. where's my pencil when you need one okay all right can it kiss okay canny can I call you canny yeah of I'm course. gonna call you canny okay <laughs> well it is uh, as I said it is a pleasure to welcome a yeah, you can call Illustrious. me Delta, that's fine. Oh, no. Of course. No need for formalities. I know you might probably like that or whatever, but... Well, I have heard of your family. Right, okay. Very yeah. famous, uh, adventurous, successful... Super family. adventurous, yeah. 
definitely. That's here, I guess. I believe your your great aunt was responsible for a fair number of very impressive uh, archaeotech discoveries in the past. Oh yeah, I, was... I think she's got the most in like all the Imperium. Definitely. Yes. I was very saddened to hear of her passing. Yeah, she went out with um, a bang, so to speak. Literally, so I heard. Yes. Yes. Well, um, how may I assist you? Oh, right. So um, apparently I need a navigator. So if you could just like get one for me, that'd be great. <laughs> <clears throat> just kind of sit up a little bit taller in my seat. Well, oh, right. uh, Who's I, this? this is Marius Acteo. Um, he has been visiting uh, the station for a short while. Um, he is from a very illustrious navigator house. House Actin, to be precise. It's a pleasure to meet you. Right. We said Marius. Pardon? Marius? Yes, Marius. Marius. Yes, Marius, I'm quite okay. hard of hearing. Right, Depart. okay. Cool. Delta, Morn, Sophilia, Grimfist. He's awesome. They're both awesome, actually. But, um... It's quite large. Yeah, yeah, it's good. You're actually quite tall yourself, so that's cool. Are you a good navigator? Because I only really want, like, the best, so... Am I a good navigator? Right. Have you not heard of House Actin? You know, no. I'm not really good at keeping up with, um... Anything. Gossip, yeah. I'll let us <laughs> yeah. speak that's for true. me. Just, just so you know, uh, Meta, mm -hmm. uh, you could you could pretend not to know them. You totally know. Oh, them. I know. I'm totally I'm pretending not to know. Them. Okay, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. No, I'm a pompous ass. It's fine. Hmm. They, their name could literally be like on on advertisements or something, or yeah. uh, and I would be like, I've never heard of them ever. <laughs> yeah, and Ophelia just likes to chip in and just really, you know, just. Dig in with the fact that she, her friend knows nothing ever, yep. even if she does. Yeah, I've gotten bored of the human politics, and I'm moving stuff on the nearby desk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Canicus is a hundred percent just trying to ignore you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do believe Marius is currently not under contract. Um. I don't, uh, I don't know whether you're looking for work currently, but... Well, with the breach, I am in need of a ship. Yep, that's where we're going. So... Well, you need me. And only I will do. Alright, okay. I feel like you should convince me, because now I'm not sure, because you're, like, really pushing it. So... Convince you? Yeah, this is like an interview now, so go. No. No. If you can find another navigator aboard this station that has the credentials that I do, then hire them. Okay, show me your credentials then. I literally grab and reach in my pack and pull out a huge book just laden with a bunch of nonsense and, and bureaucratic scribblings and I just kind of hand it to you and put it on the desk. Oh shit, that's um, way too much to read. The first um, 400 pages chronicle the last 100 years of my service aboard ships. She like takes the book and like kind of like weighs it. She's like, "Yeah, all right, that's fine." She doesn't open it at all. Hmm. Well, um, was it Canis? Canius? Was it Canicus? Canicus. Yes, uh, exactly. I believe that's what I said the first time. Uh, do you have some sort of contract or paperwork or ink or something that we could uh, expedite like this? I could. Uh, cool for some, yes, of course. Would be perfect. I assume just the traditional contract would be preferred? I mean, I guess so. Um, what are the, um, what are the benefits on, like, hire, being hired, right? Like, what are, what are the, the gains that most people would get for something like this? Um... So other, split, other than the discovery profit. aspect, right? Yeah, it would be split of profits, uh, probably uh, in 
for for the House of Acteon, I'm gonna say they'd probably demand in their contracts like joint fame and uh, like recognition for discoveries and uh, and this kind of thing. Name a uh, planet after them. Yeah, Just minor maybe. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> planet. You know. That is minor, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> quite, quite, quite possibly portions of your technological discoveries would go to the house as well, um, which would mean that the the stipend you owe is less. Mm -hmm. So you're not you're not paying him as much, but the more successful you are, the more that goes back to House Acteon. Right. Okay. Acteon. Yeah, and this is the papers are brought in and the, the contract is written up um, between you with both of you suggesting these things if okay. you are both okay with that contract basically I mean Delta really is just non -inter like not interested she doesn't care yeah. it's not <laughs> even her own not, money really is, she's is just this, like whatever is, is this a terms of services agreement where you're like, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> pretty much. Scroll, scroll, scroll. I want to play the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. She's just like, whatever. I don't. She she half a mind to just give it over to Ophelia at this point because she's sick and tired of checking off the boxes and shit. But she won't. Um, there... that's, not, that's not a good idea because Ophelia would be like, if she read a contract and you're like, it's like it says I have to like sell my soul to the devil, and she's like, that's fine, just do it. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Is, is there a captain of Amnesec in here? Huh? Is there a cabinet of Amasek in here? Uh, there is a cabinet. It, it has uh, a few different Amaseks and other liquors. I've opened it and just started sniffing them. Please, uh, some of those are actually quite... You broke him. Uh, please, some of those are actually quite uh, expensive. Could you not? I smell like garbage to me. Well, then don't. maybe don't touch or drink them. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, not for me. I will get that cleaned up very quickly. Um, uh, Rogue Trader Morn, uh, I'm glad I could facilitate this meeting and uh, signing of contracts. Uh, is there anything else I can help you with? No, no. Um, yep, yeah, thanks for the drink for my uh, companion there. It's, I'll uh, add it to the bill. Yeah, sure. Whatever. All right. Well, come on, navigator. Let's go navigate things to the yeah, bridge. So could we have the big green one carry my things, please? I will turn and glare at him at this even mention of this. Uh, oh. He's not really that. You know, his name is Grimfist, and I'd be very cautious oh, about how you address him. Yes, I'm very unfamiliar with the, the social norms of dealing with orcs. Right, so he's not like a baggage boy, so um, definitely don't. Um, I do have others out there, though. They'll be happy to take it. That would be fine. It's just somebody. It really doesn't matter who. Right, so just what's wrong with your leg or whatever? What's up with the, the staff thing? With my staff? What, what do you mean? I mean, are you, like, broken down there or something? I... My back is just not quite what it used to be. The oh, last 120 years of sitting on ships is just... It does uh, does hell to the vertebrae. All right. I feel like maybe we can get Tech Priest to just replace your entire spine. I'm back of fixing. Or he you can, can fix, fix it. it. How could you uh, do that? I just have my my chopper. Really easy. There's a few... Two uh, okay, feet. maybe a little bit less invasive, Grim. Oh, goodness uh, me. I think I'd rather uh, walk with the limp, to be honest. I could break the leg, the leg make it even. Oh, that might make it worse, unless you could craft me some sort of chair. I could craft you a chair? Yeah, a flying chair with rockets and big guns <coughs> on it. Hmm. I think I'm going to like it here. Yeah, he's um, very yes. creative. I'm also going to grab like a shiny object off the desk and put it in my pocket. Okay. <laughs> Uh, are you trying to do this? I no, just, I just do it. I I was going to ask, are you trying to do this subtly? Actually, <laughs> what I'm going to ask, are you going to do this obviously and staring directly at Canicus as you do it? Yeah. I'm actually just going to kind of scoop some stuff into my bed. 
Okay. <laughs> Just your arm over the table. Locking Damn eyes. it, Grim. Seriously, <laughs> why are you going to put all that? Uh, I could use it. Okay, fine. It's shiny, right? Fine. As long as you use it, I don't want that in the scrap later. You don't mind, do you? Start at Kenkis. No, I'm, I'm talking to Kenkis. I will put it on the bill. Uh, that's what he thought. I love you, mate. Always little, little babies, I guess. Well, if you're just putting this all on the bill, then by chance, do you have any like pastries or anything around here? I'm quite hungry. Um, yes, I, I could bring out a selection okay. of breads and yes, everything. And some meat, <laughs> some farm meat. Yeah. And some meat. Well, if you would like to dine here, I can leave you to uh, to a a luncheon or something like that. Oh, uh, I mean, I would be okay with just you know grabbing a couple of fistfuls of pastries to bring with me. That's all. I just want well, something to drink, preferably strong, so I can forget where I am. That'd be great. I will bring something out. Great. And put it on the bill, and yep. he walks away. You, you keep <laughs> saying that. Just, just you don't need to. I know. Um, in about uh, five to ten minutes, a couple of um, servants, probably, you don't know, uh, bring out uh, a few trays. There's pastries and other types of breaded foods, and there's a platter specifically of meat. It is not like a chunk of meat on a leg. It is like very thinly, finely sliced Yeah, meat. finely, yeah. No. No, so, are these like, human servants? Out. Yes. I'm gonna grab one and be like, so this is my beat, eh? Yeah, yeah, yes. Right then. Graham, you got to Could stay. you put me put me down, please? But this is mine. <laughs> he's, he's, like, he's like, you You have him like up. <laughs> he's got tea in both of his hands. <laughs> and he's just like dangling with his legs like... As this is happening, Ophelia is just like grabbing the pastries and just like shoveling them like into her bag and pockets and just like eating one of them with the rest of them. You could just see like her pockets are kind of bulging with some of the so bread. It's, 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 it's kind of like like very daintily eating like one yeah. two, three, and then just shoving loads into the door. Yeah. She just doesn't say anything about it. She just quietly, just politely eating like a little biscuit. Yeah. Um, Delta, can I eat this one? It's soft and squishy. No, you can't eat them. Uh, from that, from the that, from the can other. Can you imagine room, how much yeah. that would be on the bill? Seriously. From the other from the other room, you hear. Please don't eat the servants. Great fun. I eat the navigator. We bought him. Thank you. But you can't eat the navigator because I need him to navigate. I can navigate. Just pushing a button. Well, we already tried that before, didn't we? I mean, it only most things, maybe, but shit, it's fine. It's not important. <laughs> Okay, the entire crew wants me to get a navigator. I get a navigator and you're gonna eat him. That's really not helpful. So we're gonna have to go get another another navigator. We can always just find someone else for you to eat. Yeah, it's fine. Very quite partial to not being eaten, to be honest. I'm gonna poke him. Just like in his in his squishy bits. I believe he's fairly bony. I don't think he has squishy bits. The only squishy bits, well, there's, there's no squishy bits. There's just multiple layers of clothing and armor that kind of you push in on, but then it just <laughs> reaches like skin and bone. Mm. Yeah. He's mostly bone, anyways. Can you, not on you. do yeah. that, please? Bad. Not a great meal. Yeah. You probably hungrier than when you that. sorted. Just saying. I thought it was fine. What? Did you no. say that my bags and such were being brought to the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, one of those outside. I guess I could go get them. How many bags do you have exactly? Because I feel like... Oh, approximately 34, I Why believe. do you need that many bags? Oh, different baubles and trinkets and books and things. Oh, I like baubles and trinkets. Anything for me? Mm, no, unfortunately. Nothing shiny. Many oh, if I find out you're holding that unshiner thing to me, I should take him or I'm going to take you. Well, again, I wouldn't recommend it. All right, we'll find you something shiny on our way out. How's that, Grim? Hey. We can polish some regular metal or something. Would that suffice? 
I don't need polished metal. I need something useful, what I'm saying. Oh, if you want like to the lighty shiny. bulb I took off. Eh? don't know how that's useful if it's shiny. I is it you. useful because it's shiny, or is it because it's useful and it's shiny? It's useful because I said it's useful. That's why it's useful. Well, I don't know what you mean is useful. Uh, this is useful. I'm just going to lift up the coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, well, I don't know where you're going to put that. It's, it's, it's okay. I Here, just have this. And I take off, I have like little rings and stuff that I'm wearing. And I take off like a nice, pretty ring with like a little ruby in the middle. I give it to Grim. No. Oh. Is that shiny enough? Hey, it is. Good. Oh, yeah. I'm going to walk over to the corner and kind of just stare at it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See? There you go. You don't need to steal from our own crew all the time. As this guys we don't care about. But yeah, you, you know, it's probably best not to steal from everybody we go visit. From we the steal. other room, you uh, only I am still here, you know. <laughs> Oh, we'll pay for it. Don't worry. <laughs> Putting it on the bill. Of course you are. Just charge are. it to me. I'll cover all the food and whatnot. It's fine, really. Do we not have food on board? Oh, we have food. It's just not as good. Actually, don't taste it. We have food, food, but we don't have enough pastry. It's good. I feel you. Every single time with the pastry. I'm sorry. I just really enjoy a sweet, decadent croissant. You know what makes a good paste? Snotling. Blood. What? No. Blood. <laughs> it's disgusting. Snotling blood. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm you're never just, gonna. I'm you're never gonna agree with you on that. You smash them. There's a paste, and you eat it. Or you eat them whole when they're squirming. That's the best one. And the whole's rolling That's about. That's disgusting, oh. Grim. What does that taste like? Is it salty? Tastes like snotling. I don't know what that tastes like, it. and I really hope I never do. You're going to be sick. Right then. Are we done with that? We're good. Have you loaded up your pockets? Mm -hmm. If you wish to transport the baggage back, you will need to call in some extra help. You do not have enough people. Damn it. Yeah, that's fine. You can also probably get the bags brought by the uh, by the people here, but um, it's up to you which way you want to go with that. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, either either way, whichever is the fastest way, essentially, because, like, Delta's already done with this fucking place, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, do you want to call in and, and basically be like, we need some people carry some bags back for the navigator? Yeah. All right, yeah, doesn't doesn't take too long. Um, you guys can head back before that or wait around uh, either way once you've finished your food. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't care to wait very long. Okay. So. I would imagine then that the food is not finished by the time uh, Delta gets fed yeah. up with you guys eating everything and yeah. start, just kind of starts walking off. Yeah, just grab whatever uh, you can because I'm leaving. So. Wait, whatever I can. No, I'm gonna <laughs> don't touch the this. bottles of Amnesec, break through the door, and grab one of the bottles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Another one for the bill. Got it. Good. <laughs> we'll just have fight. It's fine. Yeah, here we, you have it. I'm going to punch it into uh, the navigator's chest. <laughs> I'd probably fall over if you. <laughs> but not like. Do me with, like not like break gumption. your rib punch, but like. But just like kind of like. Oh. Yeah. Just, mm, um, sorry, I, I don't drink this stuff. What? Yeah, you don't drink? Drink. No, I drink? No. Can I eat you now? No, you can't eat him. Oh my god, we need the navigator. Why don't you drink? It's like half the fun of doing anything. It's not healthy. Not healthy? Blood's Are you kidding me? But you were just saying how unhealthy it was for you sitting in a chair for twenty years. You never know. Okay. All right, we're we're, we're we're not here for a long time. We're here for a good time, you know. Hey, drinking's good. Yeah, drinking's great. Drinking's boring. Why? Like you're boring, you mate. I knew he was already boring. I'm already mm. bored, so let's go. Right, mate. I've been bored for like an hour at least, really, since I got here, so. Right. Off we go. And so you go. <laughs> <laughs> How 
I imagine that every single time this crew goes anywhere, they just leave behind as if like a hurricane came through. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a little bit of a trail of destruction left in this. Like, um, when you when you get back to your ship and you've boarded, uh, one of your I'm not going to say cabin boys, but kind of young men who do kind of odd jobs for officers. Oh, a, really? Oh. <laughs> um, but no, like, they, you know, they, they're they the ones who get sent off and, and carry messages and uh, have to report to you when there's bad news so they, the actual officers don't take the brunt of your anger. Right, right. Uh, Those servants? He, 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 well, no, because servitors can't relay messages. Yeah. yeah okay. Servitors can't talk, can they? Servitors can't. No? No, that's okay. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah they yeah, could yeah. relay messages. It's literally their fucking duty. No, Lost but... Uh, it's more fun if it's human, because then I can be horribly demeaning to them. Because he'll do that to a... Or, yeah, it's not a, nearly as fun. Or, yeah, and, and, uh, a young orderly uh, runs up to you once you've uh, boarded the ship and, uh, you know, you're wandering down a corridor imperiously. Um, Rogue Trader Morn, I have a message for you. Right. It better be a good message. Uh, it's a good message, right? It's fine. Um, I'm sure. Uh, the uh, uh, the the orc Grimfist, uh, his leave to come on the station has been revoked. Right. I imagine as much. Actually, that lasted a lot longer than I thought it would. Yeah. Much longer than last time, so it's pretty good. Sorry. Yeah, it is. Right. Yeah. But well, we're leaving did. anyway, so it's really just fine. Uh, all right. All right. Um, well, I've delivered the message, so yes. You don't have to rush off. You can walk with us. It's fine. What's your name oh, again? Oh. Damn it. I knew it. I, you got. You should have known. Vandy's here in spirit. Yep. Got to keep keep her in spirit. Fred Ward. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Julius. Julius. My orderly cabana boy got it. Okay. <laughs> it's the new. It's the new Lottie. God damn it. Um, cabana in, in, boy uh, Julius. <laughs> in my notes, it now says new Lonnie Julius. New Lonnie. Uh, his name is uh, Julius Fultz. Uh, F A L T Z. Fultz. Okay. The new Lonnie. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, you guys carry on down the hallways. Um, for those of you who don't know uh, 40k architecture and ships and these kind of thing, very gothic, like arches and skulls and se imperial seals, uh, like long corridors, usually, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, hippie, but usually kind of like dark colors mostly, like uh, gray, black. Yeah, it depends. Usually, yeah, we're gonna go with probably a black, gold, grayish scheme. Yeah. Ninety percent of the time, um, it really depends on who owns the ship because a Space Marine ship's gonna be in whatever fucking color it's in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so well, we are like, kind of like a piratey vessel, right? So yeah, yeah, it's gonna probably run black with yeah trims of whatever color you want. Probably more silver than gold. Okay. For her, at least. I think yeah, she's so like, there, gold is so outplayed. There, there are some uh, there are some sections of the ship that are a bit more antiquated, that yeah. have been around for longer, that are like adorned in gold, like very impressive. Uh, these most likely are from, uh, we don't have a name for your great aunt, but from uh, the previous rogue trader. Uh, great aunt Mor Morn. More Morn. More more? No. Um, we can go with. Hold on. Let's do. Delilah. Why are these names so ridiculous? Right. Marotta and Morn. That's where we're going. Marotta. Yeah. If you can chuck it in. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, uh, there there are parts of the ship that are uh, that are gold, but uh, a lot of it has been redecorated, painted over, you know, redesigned. Uh, uh, so the majority of it is, is in silver, and whether you want to, you know, kind of take the rest of the gold out and put silver in or whatever, it's up to you. Uh, the bridge, which is uh, mostly where you guys. Uh, convene. Uh, this is something that you, um, Marius, will start to learn. Uh, the bridge. Obviously, you've been on the bridge of ships before, so this yeah. is, generally speaking, the design of it is is familiar to you. But previous rogue traders you've worked for, and previous captains of ships you've worked for, they don't always uh, hang around the bridge when they do meetings and things like that. Sometimes there's like a meeting room. Sometimes you know. Uh, other other places. They have their own quarters, even, uh, where they have meetings sometimes. Um, so, for the navigator, like, and where I would be doing, like, say, my navigating, is that, like, just a station? Is that, like, a room in and of itself? Like, what kind of, uh, what's the situation for that? Um, I believe you navigate from your own room. Like, there's a specifically designed room. Uh, yeah. I'm Again, depends. Yeah. Um. Generally, I'm pretty sure it actually is a station. Mm. Um. Also, a lot of the time, it's a fucking like servitor strapped into a wall. So I'm gonna probably say this is probably a station. The astropath definitely has its own room. Yeah. But most major control stuff like that are probably on the bridge with where the captain is for simple commands and stuff yeah so uh quite often there will be someone on a console or something and the road trail will be like fire guns and what actually happens is thousands of people are rushing back and forward like fiddling with the these giant you know batteries um dying incessantly just from radiation or this kind of stuff um, and then, you know, one, one person in the bridge, like, you know, fire guns, presses a button, guns fire. Um, but yeah. And then for, for, um, for navigating, I'd say, yes, there's like, uh, you have your own special room that you can. Okay. Uh, Is navigate. that just off the bridge? I would say for convenience sake, yes, just off the bridge. Okay, sweet. Um, so yeah. Okay. Where would you like that room to be? Do you want it to be close to the bridge or on the other side of the ship or in the I mean, room? Yeah, that would be so like that. <laughs> Um I'd say like probably further forward on the ship somewhere, like maybe where the cargo holds and stuff are. Um, would be pretty inconvenient. The bowels of the ship is always inconvenient, but you don't really want to go down there. Okay. That rarely is going to happen, but... Uh, you can actually have an observatory yeah. uh, type place, but I don't believe you guys have like a specific one, which helps you with certain... Uh, Game no, kind of yeah, we don't have an observatory, I don't think. But you could you could have something smaller, maybe like off to the side in some like corner of the ship. Yeah. Because it have an image. I mean, I don't want it super small. Uh but yeah, that's like somewhere in the cor on the corner of a ship. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, just kind of out of the way, like yeah, maybe yeah. 10, 20 minutes walk from the from the bridge. You've you have like a let, let's say this just for uh flavor. You have a room with images of outside. <laughs> okay. Just complete. It's kind of al almost like a dome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you can see out outside into space, and like you know, if there's a planet to look at, you can look at that. You know, it, it kind of uh, okay generates these images and that. Yeah. And uh, everyone finds it massively discomforting to be in this room. Yeah. Aside from you, and yeah. you guys can decide how you feel about it yeah. yourselves. Ophelia would like it, probably. 
But people don't like coming to give you messages in there because it feels <laughs> like they're out in space. Yeah. <laughs> Which is obviously the fear of a lot of voidsmen who are like, space is bad, you blow yeah. up in space. Ophelia uh, generally likes anything that typically makes other people uncomfortable. That's yeah. the kind of person she is. <laughs> I've I've started to get that. that <laughs> yeah. Kind of, so, yeah. Um, so uh, all of you guys, uh, you get settled in, obviously, uh, Marius and uh, Rogue Trader Delta Morn calls a meeting of probably the the most important roles on the ship and also the Orc. Um, to I am the and- engineering like head, yeah. so like I'm an important role, okay? Sure, mate. Sure, <laughs> you're, you're, you're you're important. He's a xenophobe. <laughs> Uh, so yes, uh, there are a few a few officers gather as well. Um, they're more in the background for now because she be needs to pee. But you guys have time to talk about what you would like to do next. Yeah, cool. Um, and I'll be right back. Since we're in uh, Delta's quarters, uh, she's totally casually dressed now. Like her armor's off. The the jacket she was wearing earlier. She's just kind of like in like simple dress down clothing. Uh, very non-formal. Probably makes anybody who's like very strict about ranks and and that whole formality thing a little bit uncomfortable. I don't know how Marius feels about stuff like that, but um, yeah. I'm definitely yeah. very used to like high society and like yeah. hoity-toity and yeah, so it's a little off-putting. Yeah, yeah. No, it's kind of awkward. Um, right, so um... What we want to do, do we want to just like go straight to the breach or uh, do we need more stuff along the way? Well, I assume the ship is stocked uh, with water and food and the like for a nice lengthy journey. Oh yeah, we can go for a really long... Ha, <laughs> giggity. Sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't quite catch it. I'm not sure why you're laughing. What it was like that? a sex joke. Oh, I did that once. Once? Once. <laughs> It's a long time ago. Okay, that explains so much. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's some nice people that we can introduce you to. Yeah, sure. there's lots of crews, like 25,000 of us or something. I'm sure you could find somebody interesting. I'm very, very picky. Very picky. Okay, like how picky? Are you talking like, about appearance or personality? They have to be a navigator. <laughs> they have to be. That is very particularly picky, because like, I just hired you and you're the only navigator, so um, yeah, that sucks. What if I said they were a navigator? Would you then have a sex with them? No, unfortunately, it's it's the lack of the third eye. It really. It, it, I could it, draw a third eye in the middle of no, the forehead. It, it needs to be original, unfortunately. I could probably make it seem like they're the navigator in your head. No, it's oh, yeah, the connection with the warp. I've tried. Oh, I could t- I, I've warp. definitely, I've done that before. I mean, I, I killed the person once, accidentally, but it's fine. I've practiced since then. I'm a little bit better at making people see things correctly. So, you know, I've if I want to do that. A, a lot of people. Do you remember a how lot. many people you killed, Grim? A lot. You eat you eat a snot like, a good I'm qualifier. Gonna, a lot. I'm gonna eat a snotling. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. What? <laughs> First off, are snotlings allowed in the rogue traders place? I don't know. I brought um, it with me. In a oh. gang what, what I'm saying is, would rogue trader Delta Ward allow a snotling in her quarters? Not in my quarters, no. Yeah. So you would have got to the door and it would be like, sorry, sir. <laughs> No snotling. Not, uh, no <laughs> not after what happened last time. <laughs> we gotta check the snotling just, pouch. Just, just, just eat it. Just shovel it down real quick before you go in. Then you know, early dinner. Uh, I'm just gonna eat it, eat it. Like literally standing in front of the guard, making sure some of it gets on him. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Uh, the the these guys are regulars on the. Uh, <laughs> Got, so they they've had a lot of interaction with you. They expect yeah. this. They're still. <laughs> it's still disgusting on your face. So. Yes, yeah. it's still disgusting. <laughs> it's still but um, 
I, I imagine there's been a number of instant incidences <laughs> where yeah. you have just straight up killed a crew member. Oh yeah, people have gone missing without a yeah. doubt, either from me or the Gretchen. Like, oh. it's either people or server or snotlings, to be honest, because they're vicious buggers. Yeah, <laughs> ten snotlings in a room, someone's asleep, they're gone. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um. All right, so we're going to the breach, I guess. All right, we'll talk about the whole sex thing later because I feel like you, you you're just really uptight, so I think that will fix it. Um, we can we can definitely help you. With that. Yeah. Warp, warp travel interests me far more. Yeah, I can't help you with the human reproductive repair repair ductive system. I got those beats. <laughs> like kind of like. Almost dry heaving slightly. Just kind of <laughs> okay. Oh, last question would be men or women, or both. If it's both, that's totally fine. I'm just asking. Um, uh, Delta. Right. So, you you wanted to hire a navigator, and here I am. Right. Um, aside from just going to the breach. Right. Going through the breach. Do you have any other plans or? Oh yeah, we're gonna get like lots of stuff. We're gonna find lots of things, new planets, hopefully, and uh, Archaeotech, which is my 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 whole area of expertise personally, um, as per my great aunts. Um, yeah, Maybe just like... general fame and fortune, I, su I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I don't really care about the fame so much, but more like just general fun. Um, hopefully, blow shit up. Um, Ooh, really I strong. like to do that. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Well, um, we can plot a course, uh, whatever you choose, if that's all we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, we can go to the breach and see how horrible it is, and then, you know, go from there. Um, Sheepy, how far are we from the breach right now, from the station? Like, are we um, nearby, so or...? You all chose this station because it is the closest point to the breach where a simple short warp jump can be attempted. Uh, or it, it's it's a pretty simple jump, so it, it wouldn't require like a roll or anything like that. You can get to You have charts for these? Um Yeah, you wouldn't need charts for this. This is cool. uh just a straight warp jump. Yeah, this this is this is very close. Like, um, what you will know is that you currently don't have a way through the breach, um, and you could what what you could do is you could jump in close and check it out. Okay. But you probably wouldn't wouldn't want to get close because the automated defenses will kick in. Okay. So. You can you can scan it. Uh, you can you can go and go and give it a, a looky loo and see see what see what's going on there. Uh, the other option, of course, you have is back on the station, uh, going asking around. Um, looking at the the ship layout, it seems like our scanners are quite powerful. Uh, I could potentially jump the ship within scanning distance, but, and uh, also outside of their defense systems. And uh, get a better look if uh, that sounds good to you. Um, the tall one there, the uh, green fellow. And I'm Grim Faced. Grim Grimfist, did you say? We saw deep. You ought to hear in you, mate. I'm gonna have to be just calling like the rest of them. Yes, Grimfist, 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 wonderful. You are the engineer, are you not? Hey, I'm a mech boy. Tried and true. <laughs> Lean in. Uh, Delta, is that the same thing? Okay, well, uh, the engines, how are they? Hey, nice and ready. Hey, Purr, like the might of mocking soap. Oh, this is the greatest engines I've ever worked on myself. As you guys are talking, uh, instantly, 
a you hear from outside the unmistakable sounds of a um flamethrower being run through the halls. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just... It's spore cleaning hour. As 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 per standing orders, uh, especially the a fairly close eye is kept specifically on Grimfist because he's the main orc allowed out of the engine area. Yeah. Um, if he, for example, snacks on a snotling right outside, right outside in the hallway, uh, that hallway is going to get cleansed quickly to prevent further spread of yeah. orc. I think it's probably not alarming to us, but it would be... Uh, it would be a surprise to you. I, I probably would have jumped a little bit uh, at the sound of the, the yeah. flamethrowers. Oh, don't um, worry. It's the spores. It's fine. <laughs> I suppose you ain't got any on you. tell him right away. You could have just told him they were like, you know... Oh, right. We're under attack. Brace yourself. Yeah. Oh, dearest me. That's unfortunate. <laughs> if you're like that under combat, <laughs> we're gonna have a good time. <laughs> oh dear me, they're boarding the ship. <laughs> oh no, whatever shall we do? Guess we gotta drink ourselves to death. How is your, uh, how are your supplies of alcohol stocked? Like Always you? stocked, always. Is I it brew or I brew grog? I assume they, you don't give that to the crew. Though. <laughs> <laughs> give it to whoever wants it. Anyone so who wants danger. to drink grog is free to drink it. So there's probably been a few crew deaths before you put down a mandate of no one take anything <laughs> from the orc. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so yeah, the the crew, uh, I assume, like, uh, as per, like, it would be on, on, uh, Navy ships and, mm -hmm. uh, and kind of pirate ships in, you know, in the past in history for us. Uh, I imagine for very specific instances, you, like, pass out a ration of some form of fairly rock gutty alcohol to yeah. the crew. Like, you know, yeah. it's like, well done on a good fight, or you know, whatever. Yeah, but uh, you have your own kind of personal stock as well of nicer, nicer booze. Yes, I'm I keep um, it in my quarters. So, you guys wish to uh, kind of at, uh, get away from the station, make a quick Warp jump and check out this breach. I think that's or check, what we're check out do. this. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, uh, the kind of klaxon sounds around the ship in informing the crew of not action stations, but more you know prepare for departure, get things banked up. It takes about thirty minutes or so. Uh, the useful thing about having so many crew and you know for the size of the ship is they tend to bunk down close to where they work. So mm -hmm. if they're taking a nap or if they're off duty, they can immediately like jump up, start uh, you know, firing up the engines, start uh, working on the guns and right. other little systems that are needed. So 30 minutes and you and you're you're chugging away along away from the station. Uh, after you get a safe distance away, um, we won't require a roll for this because this is a simple warp jump. Uh, Marius, you input coordinates, you start feeling your way through the warp, um, you locate the Astronomicon, and everything seems fine and simple. It's a very, very quick jump, so there's going to be no problems going through it. One thing you will notice, uh, the rest of you, is this is so much easier with a navigator. Like, without a navigator, even this, you'd have to go slowly, You'd have to go carefully. Then Not be... if I was there. Yes, even if you were there. No. Um, <laughs> Based. I would Always never, based. ever compliment the navigator at this point, just so you know. I would not yes. even acknowledge the fact that it was easier. I I am merely stating yeah. that you realize this. Yeah. Realize, <laughs> don't mention. 
Mm. So, uh, you uh, go through the warp. Now, the warp is a weird and fucked up place. Uh, luckily, you have a Geller field. If you did not have a Geller field, your ship would be full of demons in moments, ripping people apart. <laughs> because the warp sucks. That's bad. Or it yes. just would stop existing. Or yeah, we'd or it'd stop existing. Time. There's, a whole, yeah. there's so much fun things that could happen. Uh, I flipped the Geller fields off. Even... <laughs> <laughs> well, good game, everyone. <laughs> um, but no, even 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 with the Geller field, uh, there are things that happen. The walls bleed. You see ghosts. Uh, old family members come back to haunt you. Uh, Don't get in. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, so this happens every time you go through the work. Every, every, every time. time. It, if we so, didn't have a Geller field, I think, right? No, no, it's like uh, random, oh, regardless. Oh. Yeah, an anomalies are lessened. They oh, still yeah. happen. Ships oh, okay. can still disappear whether they have one or not. Yeah. Okay, just great. So, so with the Astro Pass, the whole thing going through the warp, how does that affect them? It's... Don't, like, use magic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you probably would isolate yourself, um, especially uh, especially if there's, uh, if the Geller Field's you know, fluctuating a bit. Uh, if you've been in the warp for a while, probably the longer you're in the warp, the more you want to isolate yourself um, in your own. I would imagine your own kind of sanctum where you live uh, and where you sleep, etc., is a bit more shielded from the okay. warp. Probably closer to the Geller field as well, like where it, where it's generating. Um, but yeah, in general, you feel you probably feel uncomfortable, and you probably feel like uh, like there's something over your shoulder watching you. I would say. Yeah. So it's like always a little bit on edge whenever we're in the warp. Yeah. Whereas um, Marius, this is this is where you live, like not where you live, but this this is your jam. Yeah, you this know? is where I'm comfortable. Yeah, um, and every navigator's perceives the warp through their third eye differently so some of them will see like like roiling storms and some of them will see like you know images of of you know a big jungle they're going through like it's it's always different um but invariably they the the navigators because they can pierce the warp because they can see through it uh they can see oncoming problems and dangers so if you don't have a navigator you're much more likely to hit a hit a like thick area of warp which slows you down like you know gets in the way mm -hmm. uh, and also if you're not careful you will actually just get lost in the warp and travel for 300 years and come out the other side you know <laughs> yeah in the past or in the future or it's in crazy. hell or <laughs> There, there, there. It is, it is rumored that there are still uh, ships traveling from the Horus Heresy ten thousand years ago, trying to get back to uh, Terra to Earth to fight Horus. Uh, when that happened, like ten thousand years ago, they're still traveling through the warp to get there. So, um, yeah, fun shit. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, 40 k is rough, guys. Mm -hmm. it, it sucks yep. to be anyone at 40 k. Um, no, it's great being an orc. I mean, like if we're talking the race, the orcs, it's fine. If we're talking about an individual orc, again, really depends who you are. <laughs> um. So yeah, you guys uh, come out the warp after a brief, let, let's say, couple of hours in the warp. Enough time for you to get a bit uncomfortable not enough time for you to really experience anything bad. Um, and let's have you guys having come out the warp. Uh, obviously, Marius, you know, if if we're talking like a, a week long or two week long trip, yeah, be tired, you'd start to feel the effects. This is pretty easy for you. So yeah. you're, you, you know, you feel a vague, like itching of strain in the back of your head, but it's nothing really. Okay. Um, and yeah, you guys are, are called to the bridge for the, um, uh, for the augury, which is a scan of the, of the area. 
Sorry. It probably takes me a few minutes to get from the navigated room to the mm. to the bridge. Like it probably takes me a few minutes to get up out of my chair and grab my uh, my staff and make my way yeah. to the bridge. I assume you're still there first, however, <laughs> because oh. <laughs> judging the, by the rest of the crew, um, I I have to come from the engine, so yes. I am always last. Yes, unless people want to get run over. Uh, how long does it take Ophelia and uh, Delta to get up to the bridge? Um, probably not very long, right? I mean, I don't see any reason why not. Just... Well, you know, like, if if you're in your quarters, you're probably like 10 minutes away on a, for a like, a like casual saunter. But, yeah. You know, it Delta depends what takes her uh, time and is making sure yeah. she's the last one to the bridge. Yeah. Actually, if we just got out of the warp, I'm not even heading to the bridge. I'll just use comms. Yeah. Uh, I'm making everything and make sure everything in the engine's working properly. <laughs> uh, so, like what I was thinking is that because you've known uh, Rogue Trader Morn for quite a while, uh, you know that she's going to take a sweet ass time. Mm-hmm. So there's like no rush for you to get up there. So oh, yeah. okay. Then I guess I'll I'll, t- I'll take my time then too, and I'll like okay. you know yeah I'll get into more comfortable ish. She'll pose. definitely have been drinking by the way while she's <laughs> at work, out of boredom. So sure. yeah, yeah. Once that... once Ophelia does get there, she's also kind of more dressed down like uh, like Delta is, mm. um, and still in like black clothes. Or, I mean, now that she doesn't have like the big like billowing. If you can see more of her figure, but she's still she has she's not wearing what she's gonna wear out more. But uh, anyone who sees her can now see that she has a big uh, like ta- like tattoos going from the her jawline down to like her kind of her chest and on her arm on the same side. Yeah, um, it's like it's like casual black as opposed to yeah, black. it's like casual <laughs> goth, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the casual goth. Yeah. Uh, so, Marius, what you notice is that the crew on the bridge are fairly relaxed, as uh, if reflecting their captain. They are professional, however. Like, they've been doing this for a while, and they know what they're doing. So, by the time Ophelia comes in, about 20, 25 minutes late, comparable to, you know, everyone else, um, and she just kind of swishes in, uh, looking casual, Um they're pretty much ready to go. Uh, they're prepared, and then ten minutes after that, you know, they're they haven't relaxed. They're not off action stations, as it were. Um, and that's about the time that uh, I'm going to say Delta slops in, <laughs> as opposed to swishes. Yep, a little Is stumbling, maybe. Yeah. Okay, scanners. Yay! Well, we got. Okay. Um, so, for an augury, if you'll give me a moment, I believe it is perception plus your... Uh, is it awareness plus your uh, bonus to detection on your ship, I believe? Um, I oh, mean... probably, yeah. Let me just double check this. It's one of the things I didn't have down in the in the notes. Mm. Okay, so I I don't think you can actually like roll from the the um ship sheet though. No, it it'll be one of uh, so I think it will be uh, one of you guys will perform the augury mm-hmm. and it is uh, your perception or awareness plus the ship's detection. Okay. So yeah, it would it would be awareness plus the ship's detection, which is seventeen. So if one who of would you... be the better person, like in a in a traditional setting on the ship. I would imagine that you have someone who is not very good at it, but willing to try, and he has been 
kind of given the task of of running the augury when you give him the order i imagine that's about when marius speaks up to say i should do this i'm good at this oh the the scanners yeah is that something i would does he okay. have good awareness perception yeah awareness specifically awareness specifically it's... Uh, i think i have yeah i i yeah, I'm pretty, pretty good with awareness i think it's close to 50 uh, yeah, perception is oh, one okay. of the uh, stats for. Yeah, awareness yeah. is my best. Best. If one. Marius doesn't speak up, then Delta is literally going over there and just doing the scan. So. Yeah, I would have. Yeah. I would have went over and, and hunched over the computer uh, terminal and started doing the scan. Okay. He's a so, and a scanner. Pretty good. G- give me an awareness plus seventeen. Plus seventeen. So that's your modifier. Yeah, that's the detection that we get on the ship. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. It's Great. fine. Uh, you are fate totally roll. within your bounds to fate point. Fate point, fate point. I do will it. fate point. I don't know what, like, 100% what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. Fate point is a reroll. You just lose it yeah, for so, like one of the, oh. those points for this session. Okay, so yeah, you 100% do it. have... Uh, Three of them, you have three fate points, so if you mark it down to two instead of three okay. on your current. Okay. Uh, in times one. of death, you can burn a fate point. Yeah, um, it's a permanent so, loss of it. Yeah, so your fate points refresh every session. Okay. If you burn a say, if you burn a fate point for something like epic or to avoid death, for example, you don't get that back ever again. Uh, okay, I get I may, however, award fate points for very specific epic things. Okay. Uh, my reroll, there we go. 3.5 hey. degrees of success. Better. Okay, <laughs> so 3.5 degrees of success. Um, you run the augury, you receive back a plethora of information about this. It's. It seems to be a very very large constructed almost like a space station except for it's just a wall like a massive big much much bigger than the ship it has an unbelievable number of ancient guns you mm, uh if anyone has archaeotech uh, that is a possible role, as this is relayed to you all as a group. I don't have it. Are there like? A... Uh, no. Oh well, actually, because of the amount of information that Bobby's gotten, then yes, I'll say plus ten. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't need it. Roll to seven. <laughs> Uh, and I don't even notice because the information is so interesting that I'm just like, we're yeah, we're just banging back and forth between the the information on the screen, like the weapons and stuff. I've never quite seen anything like this before. What do you make of it? So, uh, this is most likely predating the Horus Heresy. Um, and the fact that it has lasted this long in the warp hmm actually could I get from anyone who has the knowledge of Forbidden Law Warp oh I have that a roll I as well any modifiers or zero Uh, no modifiers for this one because it's kind of uh, a bit out there um, it's a 35. Uh, yeah. Oh, sick. You both succeeded, so you both know this. Um, this area has been embroiled in a warp storm as long as you guys can remember. You could probably go and research the exact when and where and how it got uh, taken into the warp. 
what you do know is that in terms of time, this, you know, for, for the actual structure, it could have been a week. You know, it's been gone for over 10,000 years, but it, like in terms of time for the, for the structure, if someone was living on it, they could have been gone for a week. You, mm-hmm. you don't know. So it's hard to tell how worn it would be and how worn it should be uh, compared to the time it's actually been gone. But uh, yeah, it it's very old, which means that its weaponry and its makeup is very advanced. Um, and uh, for Marius and Delta, uh, you guys looking at it together, you know that even in even a even a proper imperial fleet with like much much bigger ships would probably be torn apart before it could do much to this. Uh, the, the defenses are powered and automated. Um, coming in range is going to be a problem. You can't see really past that. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any way through or any way in. It is pretty massive in scale, so you could spend... Eh, it, 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 it would depend. You, you'd, you'd say, like, searching would require, like, very specific auguries. Uh, you could maybe get it done, possibly if you had another uh, another couple of ships, you could possibly get it done in a year or two. Long time. Well, if our plan is to get through there, then we're going to have to come up with some sort of a plan. Not just one ship, at least. Right. Um, hmm. I mean, even like a fleet of ships, I don't think they'd last very long. Um, she be. Can I do a check, like almost like the equivalent of like a history check or like a lore check, to see if I remember any of uh, anything in my studies as a younger uh, younger navigator growing up uh, about structures like this from like Horus Heresy era, like these uh, mega structures, like these these giant floating walls in space. I will say, uh, at a minus 20 because it's going to be difficult. Yeah. Uh, common law navis uh, nobility. Okay. So this is like back from your training and, and, your, and your studies. And everything. Uh, minus 20, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, I feel. It's, it's, a, it's a rough roll. I think you need 20 or under, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you've probably heard, you know, vague stories about the splendor and magnificence basically all you know is that old stuff like this fucking scary <laughs> especially if it's not on your side hmm. it's not something i want to uh have open fire on us well yeah no because i don't think we'd last very long do <laughs> okay so is there someone we can go that knows somebody that knows about Pre Horus Heresy type uh, weaponry, maybe. I mean, I know a lot about Archaeotech, but i um, not really sure how to approach this one. Um, I wonder. Is it manned? No, it's Probably. automated. It's automated. Right. Um, is there any sort of way we can t- send a signal um, to bypass the Security systems, probably not. Oh, bank- yes. like a, a we're friendly sis, like signal, maybe. Yes. I don't know. Is that something we could ever do? Mm, not that you'd know about. Right. Like Theorizing, that, obviously. That that kind of like maybe if you got really deep into the Mechanicus, 
there might be rumors or something like but they wouldn't share it with outsiders and they're kind of assholes anyway yeah. so. um yeah i mean we obviously can't do anything while we're here right so we have to go find somebody that knows more about it than we do but if you say the mechanicus wouldn't help us they well, they'd be a long way away to contact that them. too. Hmm. I will say, um, part of the reason you went to the station is because there were rumors that someone knew a way through. Right. So we should go back. Yeah. Well, well, well like her, her thought process was to go back, but she wanted to see it for herself, right? So she never got a chance to go look at it. Um, and now that yeah. they did the scan, they have more data to go off of. I mean, it was always possible that the rumor was just a rumor, and there's just a huge hole in it where you could just be like, "All right, go through there, no problem." Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I guess we're going back to the station. Um, well. That'll be fun. Right. I'll head to my station. Okay. I'm gonna go drink. And I'm gonna go back to my room. Fantastic. Somebody go check on Grim. Make sure he's... You can hit him up on the crew. box. So. Right. Hey, Grim. Hey, what is it? We're gonna go back to the stupid station. We're gonna blow it up? No, we can't blow it up. We need to find somebody who knows how to get past the stupid defenses. Then can I blow it up? Maybe. Depends. Right then. Uh, also, I need like five new servitors. Some of them broke on accident. <laughs> right. On accident. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'll have them sat down. Thank you. But the whole time there's like really like loud, like <laughs> blast, like blasting music. And by music, <laughs> like. It's just like hard drums and <laughs> yeah, mixed with the sound of actual banging and working and yelling of Gretchen and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Julius, so I, we need servitors for Grim again. Um. All right. How how many should I send down? I don't know, like five. Okay, maybe like yeah, five. Well, maybe, maybe ten, and then we don't have to send more down later. Well, then he just destroy him faster. If he's got That's, ten of yes. them. All right. Uh, very well. I'll, I'll I'll go and organize that right away, and he scuttles off. And uh, you guys will jump back to the station. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say that uh, you know, no need for preamble. Uh, you guys make the jump, very simple. Um, I'm going to say for um, just for just for the sake of it, uh, Ophelia, during the jump, it's very very vague, but your shadow in your room wanders about by itself. Is this the first time I've seen something like that, or is this pretty normal? You've probably experienced similar things. I don't think your shadow's ever wandered off by itself, though. Oh. But you would know that this is warp fuckery. And yeah. It could be it could be real or a hallucination or whatever. Um, so, uh, how how long how long is the the jump for? Like, how long does this thing happen for? Uh, so uh, probably about halfway through the jump, so it probably lasts about 30 minutes. Uh, it kind of wanders over to a bookshelf type place, uh, like, you know, looks like it. it's looking through and, and this kind of thing. It's just on the ground. But, uh... Okay, she just she just sits there and watches it. Yeah, <laughs> just, just seeing just what watch. the shadow does. She just watches it. By the way, it. if you're ever asked, go with Nurgle. <laughs> no, what? No, no more questions. Just if you're ever asked, go with Nurgle. That's all I'm saying. Which dark god do you desire to serve? All right. 
But yeah, no, she's just like sitting on her, this is in her, like her room, right? It's like on her bed. She's just yeah. sitting in the middle of her bed, watching the shadows, it's like walking around and doing stuff. Okay. And you guys get back to the station, you dock up, uh, shuttles are prepared, um, orcs are reminded that they're not allowed off, and you guys are ready to do what you'd like to do. So Grim can't come with us this time? He's not allowed, he can come with you. He's definitely coming along this time. (laughs) So- Fuck those pompous assholes. The the thing about a rogue trader um, that's a lot of fun is if Fuck you go to a planet and they're like, you're not allowed to do anything, or you're not, you know, these are our laws and stuff, you can go, I don't care, I'm a rogue trader. Yeah. <laughs> I, have a giant, I have a giant ship that can bombard you from orbit. What are you going to do? Yep. So there's a certain amount of, you know, the law applies don't give to a everyone fuck. else. No I mean, given. if you want me, I'll go. I'm blasting amazing music in the engine room and hitting things randomly. Yeah, what would happen is Delta would would uh, come in. Right, do you want to go? You want to stay where you are? Because I don't know how long this can take. Uh, yeah, I'll go. It's boring down here anyways. Yeah, Okay. I'm still no, drinking fuck. though. I'm I'm done with this. I'm already done with this this fucking station. Well, I can bring you a drink. I can grab one. I can't drink your grog if that's what you mean. Yes, you can. No, I... no. There's a reason you uses the boss. It's because you're tough, cunnings, and murderous. And tough, am... cunning, and murderous is exactly what you need to be. I am the... all those things and also drunk. Definitely right. drunk. I grab a, like, whatever the f- It's just like a can of grog. Yeah. I pull some of the- I have my, like, my cake thing back on, and the pockets are still, like, full. Yeah. <laughs> but I take out, like, a piece of bread, and I'm just like, Delta, do you want some- some pastries to kind of soak up a bit of the alcohol? I think I'm doing just fine with all the alcohol right now. Also, herself, and she just eats the bread instead. <laughs> all the shiny bits I've melted or fastened in onto what I am currently turning into a throne in the engine room. Okay. <laughs> right. I have to have a seat, otherwise they won't listen. I'm in charge. Is, is this a throne for you? Me. Or a throne for... For me. Okay. For me. <laughs> here, here's, here's a question, though. When Delta comes down, it is for me. Okay. <laughs> Just one. Does Grim share this with us? Like he's making a throne? No. No. Probably, yeah, <laughs> if you come yeah. down and look at it, sure you'll know. Yeah. Um, okay. Fucking reason to tell you I have a chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, would you guys like to have what we will call a powwow? on like how you'd like to go looking for information and etc uh before you leave or would you like to leave and stumble around for a bit like how would you like to approach Gatha? unless somebody else says something she just kind of walks off the ship and is like all right we're going that way okay okay if, if otherwise like if i wasn't asked specifically i would have still been in my uh in my quarters kind of just going over charts and stuff all right yeah um, I mean, she would have calmed everybody saying that they're going off. Okay, so if, if that's the case, I, I yeah. would have shown up then, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah uh, you, you probably have the most information about the station currently, so, um, yeah. Right, I, I okay. imagine if you were called, you'd be like, yes, I, I can help. Yeah, I, I definitely I definitely go along, yeah. Okay, so where do we go? Who do we talk to? Who's got fuck you technology? Things like that. Who's that person that said they could get through? What was that rumor about? Can we remember? You know, we could start with Canicus. A great way to get information from you is to hurt him. I found that out. There's like plenty of other ways, though. Great. Yeah, but hurting him's the most fun. Well, yeah, but then if you hurt him too much, they're not to talk law because they're dead. Yeah, it's the best part. But they, yeah. they, that doesn't help with the information. Yeah, you just find a new one. Okay, There's a bunch of you guys in. I feel like we're in this cycle, this endless loop. 
Can you try your grog? Give me the grog. I hand her the can. Uh -oh. It's a terrible idea. I don't care. What do I have to roll for this grog right now? I like the ED you have to roll. Um, let's have a look here. What is grog? Well, so originally grog is a very medieval alcohol in its most basic form. It's basically just to get you fucking drunk. It most likely tastes like shit. Moonshine, uh, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's moonshine. Now, this is orcish moonshine, basically, um, that I brewed in an engine room. Oh, okay. <laughs> it probably has engine fluids in it. <laughs> For extra zing. So, what I will do is I will say you can roll Kraus to get a bonus on your toughness, if you like. Oh, is so it for a potential bonus? Yes. Guess we'll try. Nope. No bonus. That's fine. Roll your toughness, please. Rolling toughness. <laughs> nope. Keep keep in mind we don't have too much longer. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I'm gonna re-roll yeah. that. Yeah, um, okay, okay. That makes sense. Come on. Oh, oh. Wow. Yes. You Badass. chug that motherfucker <laughs> and then smash it on your forehead <laughs> and chuck it and chuck it back. It's a grim. Oh, yes. Grim looks at you actually upset. What? That was mine. You gave it to me. Gave it to you for a drink. Yeah, I drank it. All of it. I turn around back to the ship and go grab another grog. <laughs> no humans could drink grog. Well, this human can. Just saying. My goodness. Try to outdrink me, I dare you. Are her words, like, actually coming through as words, or is she... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's hold, she can hold it, hold the liquor. Truth of that hard. That was a three point. Five. Yeah, that's I, basically a crit success. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. I'm I'm going back for an, another fucking thing of rug. <laughs> rude. <laughs> I mean, also quite impressive. This is probably part of the reason why you agreed to follow. <laughs> I mean, in the end, it doesn't impress me because there's a reason. I follow. Yeah. Because I haven't killed her yet. But that's <laughs> <laughs> you understand the day I can kill you is probably the day I take the ship. But, yeah. Or the day you just give me the ship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <All right. clears throat> um, so yeah, let's say you guys well, you get your grog, another can. Right. Yes. Um and uh you're back on the station now. Have him being shuttled across. Uh, this time, I assume since you're flaunting the laws, you want a proper contingent of guards. Mm, yeah, yeah, probably. Um. Oh, also. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, Marius, would you have had any retainers with you? Do you think? Um, like we, can kind of, we can write them as have being brought aboard the ship if you want. More than likely. Okay. Got to keep them teeth straight. <laughs> uh, so let, let's say you, you also have a contingent of like 10 personal guards who came with you and they see to your basic. Support. Yeah, they're, they're probably old, like they're probably old sworn to the house. Yeah, and they just follow me around. They like there's probably a group of ten that's um, mandated to every member of of the house. I I would I would say they're a specific clan or family, as it were, um, that is sworn to your specific house. Uh, if you'd like to come up with a name, you can. Otherwise, you I can have that one. You can have that one. <laughs> that one's yours. Okay, uh, if you guys carry on, Sheepy will come up with a name. Okey -doke. Um, figure out, figure out what you'd like to...
I want to crack some skulls. I'm bored. I haven't cracked skulls in forever. Well, then let's just go to the, you know, underparts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he won't do anything. But still. Uh, um, Sheepy, can I roll to see if I remember, like, what rumors I have heard on board the ship about uh, someone saying that they could open the breach or something like that? Like, to what degree have I heard the rumors? Sure, sure. Um, let us say... Uh, also, uh, I sent this to you in Zoom, but oh, uh, it's it's the Margot family. Okay. Or, or the Margot family. Yeah, um, I'll chuck it in. I'll chuck it in the Twitch chat so that everyone can see the name because it's a weird name. There you go. Um, oh, that's not even remotely close. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna call them the Man Gods, but I was like, that's a little on the nose. <laughs> um, what kind of clan is this? Uh, this um, is the uh, the clan that's uh, oath sworn themselves to. Oh, okay. The Axion uh, Noble House. Uh, navigators. Okay. Um, so you have you have ten of these guys. Uh, I assume they're dressed up in probably like Arbite apparel, like not exactly the same. It's customized. It's um, it, it, and it matches though. It, it definitely matches. Yeah, in, in almost always. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's very definitely dressed in your uh, family colors and. Well, in your house colors and, and everything like that. Um, would you say they go around with things like shock batons, you know, kind of like suppressive stuff, or are they more like heavily tooled up with like deadly weapons? They're fully kitted. They're yeah. they look intimidating. So maybe maybe they've got like uh, mm, I'd say probably probably like uh, bolt pistols and maybe a, a shock baton as well. Um, kind of, you know, so they can they can crowd suppress or just straight up murder, if need be. Yeah, but it, it's okay. primarily only ever just to crowd suppress, keep people away from me. All right, more likely like hot shot lads than an actual bolt pistol. I was I was thinking hot shot lads, but It'd this be, is a very rich family, and they probably show it. Still a servant clan. Mm. The bolt pistols would be for the family itself, and yeah. their actual guard. Yeah, okay, let's say Hotshot Lads Pistols makes sense. I mean, Hotshot Lads is still fucking Hotshot Lads. Yeah, they're, they're, they're great. <laughs> so, uh, let us uh, say that you will roll a... I think... What we'll go with is probably a straight up plus 10 intelligence for you, okay. um, or a flat uh, fellowship, depending on like, if, if you want to have, if you want to be remembering like conversations you've had with people and stuff like that, that'll probably be fellowship. If you're just trying to remember information you know, yeah, I'd be re trying to remember just straight information. So just intelligence plus 10? Yeah. Okay. Boom. Ah, fail. 77. Uh, again, you do have a couple uh, fate rolls left. Yeah, I'm going to use another fate to re-roll that. One left now. Let's see. Yeah, I'll just do that. Intelligence plus 10. Oop. There we go. Okay. Just me. Um, yeah, so you remember uh, conversations had while staying with the McCohen family. Not actually Canicus himself, one of his nephews, um, liked to get a bit drunk and had slightly less guarded conversations with you than the rest of them. Um, they seem to, the, the family seems to have been trained to be 
proper a proper rogue trader house you know in in terms of uh keeping secrets and you know not let you know everything has a price this this one the house has fallen a lot since since the good days for them so they're not trained as rigidly they're not as uh, as tight-lipped and it let slip that there are people who have been closer to the to the breach to this to this wall um in smaller ships and there there've been a group of kind of mercenary bounty hunter types who have been checking out the wall to see if they can get past it to see if they can you know figure out a way through it and rumors are that there have been some successes uh no one's talked about it openly so it, it's kind of like people have been trying to buy like the the McCohen family have been trying to buy this information off them they're just you know they don't it's such a worthwhile thing to have they're either holding out for more money or more power and influence or they don't know but um yeah that that's what you know so far they hang out at a uh kind of run down area that they've partially taken over you, you could say these guys are almost a crime family but they're you know okay yeah, I, I'm relaying all of this um, to the group. Yeah. Um, so maybe it is best to speak to Canicus or... No, I feel like we should just go there, nephew? where they are. You know, get some information. Yes, well, that should work as well. Uh, yeah. I know the way. We can head there now if you wish. Okay, yeah. And I'll uh, start heading there. Okay. Um... So yeah, this this area is uh, when when you get to it, it's not completely like militarized, but you notice people walking around more freely with weapons. They're more armored. Uh, they're a lot rougher looking. Um, the just kind of everyday workers and citizens, etc. They're walking around unmolested, but you'd say you'd say probably like they they also look a bit rougher. Like you know they're they're more comfortable being here than than in other places. Um, and you know you don't see any sign of the traditional police type force. You know the guards and this kind of thing. They don't. Come um, so you won't you won't be like stopped by anyone or anything. You'll get a few odd looks, um, especially directed towards the orc, I would imagine. Uh, and yeah, there, there's multiple multiple places you could go. You don't know specifically where they hang out, uh, who the leader is, or anything like that. So I will say, as a group. Again, probably discounting the orc because he doesn't care about humans. Um, the best place for, to go would be some kind of bar, pub, tavern, etc. Um, there, there are a few other like official-looking buildings. There is um, two or three as you walk through. There are two or three like very large warehouse-type-looking buildings that are heavily, heavily guarded. You could go ask around there. You could ask a randomly passing guard, but you could go ask at these kind of warehouse type buildings, but that would draw a lot of attention to you. So. To the bar. We're going to go to the bar. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Not, not some more drinking right after. Yeah, more drinking. Definitely yeah. more drinking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. By the way, I have like this entire time just getting kind of randomly swinging the chopper around. Not as it hit anything, but occasionally I break stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Again, you guys, you guys are a procession of like fairly imperious, well dressed people with an entourage of guards with with weapons. Like, <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. 
And of course, there has been word gone round, especially here, that there's a rogue trader with a ship. So, you know, people will take a decent amount of random smashing to a certain extent because the, you know, stepping in front of Rogue Trader and being like, hey, why did you smash my chair? Is a very silly idea compared to paying for a new chair, <laughs> basically. So, yeah. Um, As we're walking, think- anyone, anyone who gives us, like, really weird looks, I just, like, I just, like, widen my eyes at them and, like, stare very, like, creepily at them. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I think half the time, <laughs> Delta would be like, "As it to the bill. <laughs> <laughs> just out loud. <laughs> yeah. Every time he breaks something. Uh, so because um, because I I think you're probably people wouldn't necessarily look at you, uh, Ophelia, and be like, "That's definitely an astropath." Yeah. But they know enough to know that you're in some form like extra to just being human like yeah you know, they, they and know also she, she just w- wants people to be creeped out by her so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, i'd say added on to the fact that you definitely look the part of the the psyche the mutant the witch all this kind of thing like people will definitely give you a wider berth than they usually would just from being in contact you know like seeing like an orc and uh, mm-hmm. going along. um you guys it doesn't take you long there's a few there's a few bars, a few uh, kind of drinking holes, basically, pretty much what they are. Um, how would you like to enter this? Because you do have an armed guard with you for a start. And, you know, like, are you wanting to basically walk in and take the place over and kick everyone out? Or no. are you just going to slip in? And- no, she tells the guard to wait outside. Yeah. She kind of waltzes in. She doesn't quite kick the door open, but it's pretty damn door. close. <laughs> no, I'm going first. The rogue trader goes first. <laughs> yeah, I know. I she... still break the door. Oh. <laughs> Add it to the bill. I need a drink. I, break, I mean, like, it's decently dented inwards yeah. and yeah. probably won't open or close anytime soon. Hmm. Are you just, like, punching it or are you smacking it open with your chopper? Like, what? what yeah, I'm just gonna just. <laughs> Clunking it out of the way. Okay. The door kind of like swings open. Uh, probably comes off its hinges slightly. Is like a, a jar, and and like hang, hanging off the hinges a bit. Uh, doors wide open. Uh, whatever music was playing and conversation was happening has stopped. <laughs> uh, you are all highlighted, uh, like in the door frame, with your guards and everything. And everyone is looking at you. I I find a, I looking find information. <laughs> looking for some. Group. What was that name again? Uh, Maurice. Something. Do we know? Uh, oh, you know that um, name? which which name? The nephew the, was it? The people with the the information. The Margot clan. That is the Bobby's. Yeah. That's Bobby's guard. Do, we, we don't we don't even know the, the name, do we? Uh, all I know it's his uh, Canicus's uh, nephew, as far as I know. I was spouting it. rumors. That's just, that's all I have. Unfortunately. Uh, right. Were you looking for information? <laughs> well, yeah, we're looking for information. Right, I just need to drink information, information about about the breach, obviously. Right, you bugging you, mate. We need to find information about a wall in a breach. And any of you sucking gates, who offers it to me, I will not smash the head of. <laughs> yeah, what he said. I'm going to hey. walk out of the bar. Just going to stand up front. Uh huh. <laughs> tension. That's where the guards are currently standing. Yeah, and I'm just rubbing my temples. <laughs> all right, barkeep. I need a drink before all the smashing happens. Yes, one. Would you like? I don't know. Whatever is the strongest thing you got. Strongest thing you got, of course. Yep. I'm not an orc. I swear. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, gets your drink. I assume you want it put on your tab. Yeah, as it's the bill. <laughs> it's one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as this happens with uh, Grim, uh, a large, large man stands up and walks forward. Uh, he folds his arms and then points with his other arm and says, what do you want? To me or to her? To you. Uh, is you here for fightings or for tellings? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want for and what do you want told? Uh, don't just, what do we want? Oh, yeah, we need information about how to get into the breach because some Jack Hurst apparently knows how to do it here. So we need that information on who it is so we can go get that information from him. Or her. Right. As a one of you humans has got information about how to get into a breach stop by a wall and we're here to take it. Right. And... How would you like to try and convince him to give you the information? Intimidation? Uh, it's the only interactive stat I have. That is very true. <laughs> and very orky. <laughs> it is the only thing I have. Uh, boop. It's still a success. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh. Yeah. You got it. So. Um, he will uh, incidentally uh, I don't know whether you guys caught it um, he has three arms yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, no, I I just, just a dick, but... you guys have great poker faces I was like no one reacted to any part of that <laughs> um, uh, so yeah he is comparably a bit shorter than you and a bit less bulky which obviously orc um, but he seems to have been around a fair bit. You, like, he's got scars. He's got um, he's got kind of even bullet holes and stuff. Possibly he's served in a regiment or maybe in the navy. Uh, of course, again, who knows how much you know about humans? But uh, I continue fresh. to look at him like he's literal trash. Yeah. Um. It's to the point where he probably has an idea of how tough an orc can be. Mm -hmm. Added on to the guards and, and the rogue trader with you, uh, he's going to back down. And uh, not to the extent where he's like cowering or anything, but he just kind of relaxes a little bit and says, uh, you want to talk to the buffs? We want to talk to the buffs. You... What? They, what? They, they, they're a group. They own this area. Um, they own a couple of warehouses. Uh, there's a fairly nice uh, place where they have their headquarters uh, just a bit out of the ways from this area. I don't know human bathing mechanics could own something. Huh? Baths. 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 Yeah. Right, so yeah. where do we find them? Uh, so he quickly gives you basic directions uh, to their... Uh, the warehouses are the ones you guys have seen. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a kind of headquarter type area where their head top members gather every now and then. Mm -hmm. uh, which is not actually in this kind of like I guess lawless area. But um, it's a bit further down the station. Okay. Alright. Uh and probably says like most likely a place to find them is in their headquarters but they do hang around their warehouses um sorry warehouses so boring all right that's good yeah you can have the rest of my drink but she downs the rest of it and then gives him the glass as she's walking out <laughs> the door much obliged he's no fighting eh? hey not yet. I imagine you'll get your fight soon. Where well, you is a boring. Let me smash some of them armored balls. <laughs> this space marines. Well, we I need them. God. For now. 
me. Plus, it's Marius is mostly anyway, and wouldn't depreciate it. Uh, yeah, Grimfist. I guess that's probably not great. I could smash him too. No, we need the navigator. Day. No, unfortunately, you have an aversion to being crushed. I feel mm. like everybody has an aversion to being crushed. Would you like I... to be crushed? I know get you like being I crushed. I don't know about that. I feel like some people are kind of into it. I don't know. I know get what he liked being crushed very often, but he was strong, so he pushed no. back. No. Uh, here is uh, a question that could be interesting. Um, Ophelia, have you mm. ever crushed someone who was into it? Because <laughs> you can crush people, if I remember. That's One true. of your psycho powers is uh, telekinetic crush. Well, that's a. Uh... That's for her to know and y'all to find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know right. if I'm too drunk or not drunk enough. I feel like the latter. I think I need more drink. Can Another I have bottle. some more of your grog? No. no. I'll just no take more. a sip this time. By the way, this time I came out with like a proper keg and I just slung mm. over my shoulder. Okay. <laughs> Rim, don't be so greedy. Just a little bit. Uh, Please. Does anyone here have a helmet? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I assume there's a helmet here. Um, just, I grab like, a helmet on one of off of someone's head and just pour some grog into it. Uh, if, if you guys just you know keep going for a second, I just need to jump off. Yeah. For a yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> none of my. None of the. Um, Man's guard have helmets on. Oh. I assume one of the guards has a helmet. I take it, pour grog in it, and offer to it. <laughs> right. New cups now. Okay. Right, so we're going to go in to these buffs and demand information about the breach. And if they don't comply, then Grim will smash them. Oh, he's smashing. Yeah. Or, yeah. or I could just find out. Or I could smash him. Well, okay, better. Okay, she finds out, and then sh then Grim will him. smash him. That's okay. Nice yeah. idea. Okay. She finds out information, then I smash him. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. I like this plan. Well, I can too. I'm gonna drink the rest of this grog then. Not yours, the one you pulled for me. <laughs> one in the helmet. <laughs> you know you're an alcoholic when you're drinking booze out of a helmet. That was so <laughs> helmet, yeah. I'm waiting for Sheepy to tell me to roll again. Uh, seeing as you did so well last time, <laughs> I will say plus 10 to your toughness roll. Okay. Oh my god, um, that's amazing. I can't wait for you to just not. Yeah, I know. I, I have a question about the, like, astropathic <laughs> stuff. Holy shit. I'm the best alcoholic ever. Uh... Take a talent meta, <laughs> which, okay. uh, like, you've rolled basically pretty much crit successes two times in a row with oh, this yeah. shit. Um, Orc Grog. Adept. <laughs> um, I, ha I have a question, though. Uh, so with yeah. the whole the mind probing stuff, um, just in general, like, are... Can Astropaths just do, like, more, like, kind of small, casual kind of psychic things too like for example like if you want to make someone just see something like can you just do that at will or is that um is it, is it always a very involved process it's, it yeah it's it basically you have to focus the power of the warp to mm -hmm. channel what you want to do mm -hmm. um i would say if you want to do something the equivalent of like making someone see something it would probably fall into the realms of mind pro mm -hmm. uh we could probably you know tinker a little bit you'll mm -hmm. still have to make your focus power tests and risk uh, okay. and stuff like that so okay i was just wondering like how involved it was or not uh so yeah if if you have something a bit off off the tracks that you'd like to do like mention it and we'll, we'll figure it out kind of mechanically okay by the way, fun fact, just so heads up for you, I am innately psychic. Yeah. Wait, what? Yes. All orcs are... All orcs are innately psychic. 
As in, like, a psychic in the same way that astropaths are? Or, like, a psychic as in, like, can see the future kind of psychic? <laughs> as in, like, our shit works because we're psychic. Yeah. They uh, share kind of a racial mind in a weird way that make It kind of distorts reality. Yeah. Can they read human thoughts? If, no. they, if enough of them thought they could, yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> However, Delta is convinced that Grim can read her thoughts and constantly asks, what am I thinking right now? Or what number <laughs> am I thinking about? Just and then o- o- Ophelia like, whisper, whispers it in his ear. <laughs> <laughs> Every time she just like feeds him the info from her brain. <laughs> Grim, what I number mean, am I thinking about now? Seven. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Grim will guess every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, yes. Uh, you guys are heading towards the headquarters, I'm guessing? Yeah. Uh, so, these guys are clearly powerful on the station, but comparable to even, like, the people who own the station? Not really. Okay. Uh, you can pretty much flash whatever you like or just walk in with your guards and stuff it's very clear that you're kind of you know on this on this station you're power incarnate basically so you're not going to be stopped yeah i'm not i'm not presenting any i'm literally just walking in okay the guards won't stop you there's a couple of guards you know like uh mishmash crappy shotgun type Mm -hmm. stuff fucking but yeah yeah a couple of tears down from the weapons you guys, your auto guns? Like guards have. Like huh? Auto gun style stuff? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Where's your boss? Uh, Anybody? Tiller's inside, if you want to talk to him. What's the name? His? Tiller. Her? Tiller? Tiller. Yeah. Okay. His. Right. Yeah. Tiller. Uh, t- Hello. Hello, somebody visiting you. Are you, are you calling out? Oh yeah, for she's him? shouting. Like, okay. Uh, um. So one of the guards says, uh, "Do you want me to go get him?" I mean, I'm okay. I'm gonna keep shouting till he shows up. So. All right, I'll go get him then, and then runs inside. <laughs> um. Probably five minutes go by, and uh, Tula comes outside uh he is dressed a lot like all the rest of them kind of like patchy leather gear um nothing too spectacular he does have a las pistol which is probably the first las weapon you've seen Mm -hmm. um which is a bit more impressive than everyone else i guess but don't i have one of those uh you have a hell gun which I, wait, on my you, character sheet it says best craftsmanship last pistol. Yes, you have a very nice last pistol. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I, believe, I believe it's Marius who has the hell gun. Yeah, I have a hell, the hell pistol. What is yeah. a hell gun? Uh, it's That's exciting. Yeah, it, it's probably the best one of the best weapons you guys have against like armored foes. Very penetrative. Mm. Um, is is it a type of hot shot last weapon? Uh. I, I, I believe it's kind of in that genre. Of... I'm pretty sure a uh, hell gun is hot shot lads. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Then it, it, yeah, it's it's basically a lads weapon that's been juiced up. It's less reliable, but it is very, very uh, damaging. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and yeah. Uh, well, it is a pleasure. Yes, definitely you make a pleasure. The acquaintance yeah. of a, yes. Yeah, you're Tiller, I'm guessing. Tiller, yes. Tiller, okay. I'm in charge of this operation. What is this operation exactly? Well, we hire ourselves out as guards, mercenaries, bounty hunters, spies, informers, anything that pays. Right, okay, so. I, I heard you have information about the breach and how to get past the defences, so that's what I'm looking for. We may have had...
someone who knew how to get through. I feel like you're being very vague, so let me put it very clear to you. I need information that's specific about how to get past the defences to get to the breach. That's what I'm looking for. Right, well, we are also mercenary spies, informers, etc. Um, money is important. What can you give us for this information? Okay, I have I have two offers for you. Um, my friends here could rip apart your mind, or my other friends here could smash your heads in. <laughs> right. I mean, I guess I could be like, you know, maybe hire you out at some point too, if your information's valuable, but I feel like right now, given the level of intoxication I have, and general boredom of this freaking station. I just want to get the information and leave. But if I don't, then I guess we'll have a little bit of fun. Can I demonstrate? I could demonstrate. Oh yeah, he could demonstrate if you want to see the special. Yeah, I okay. grab one of the guards, probably the guard that went and got him. Yeah. And I tear his arm off. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Very nice. Uh... Uh, let's have from <laughs> any four of you a social role that you would like. Uh, intimidation would work very well here, I would say. Yeah. Uh, if any of you would like oh. to add to intimidation, every, like you get a plus 30, uh, Grim, <laughs> and the rest of you get plus 20 if you'd like to also add to this role. What I'll do, okay. I'll, I'll step up, and this whole time my hood has been down just above yeah. my eyes. I just pull the hood back and and like my third eye is there and I, I'm just gonna like have the eyelid kind of flicker as if I'm about to open it. Okay. That's okay. I succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Ripping off someone's arm was successful. <laughs> uh, it was intimidated plus, what was it, a 20? Uh, plus 20 for you guys, yeah. Yeah, um, You're not very uh, neither are you. <laughs> uh, can I use a fate point to reroll? I <laughs> succeeded. <laughs> I mean, Grim, Grim did succeed, and he was the, along with uh, the rogue trader, the main part of the, um, yeah, uh, of, of the of the thing. But if you if you'd like to, you know, manipulate something with telekinesis, uh. Uh, maybe like just do some base telepathy telepathy stuff like make them uncomfortable kind of yeah in their, in their minds yeah I'll, I'll definitely I'll do that I'll, so I'll re-roll so <laughs> now it's still bad <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. They 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 have they have a few whispers in their mind, which is basically like, "Hey, you suck." <laughs> <laughs> I like your butt. <laughs> <laughs> My pistol's slightly better than yours. <laughs> uh, like just like kind of an itching in the back of their head. It doesn't intimidate them, but um, it, yes, it does happen. Uh, and uh, until uh, like it, it, as I said, the main thing was grim. Uh, ripping the arm off, mm -hmm. and uh, you guys, you guys being there as well does uh, does definitely assist to that. It wasn't particularly difficult to intimidate, them. right? Um, yes, all right. Uh, let's say you know a good job or two in the future, possibly sounds like a deal. Um, so there was a guy. He he was working with us for a little bit. Uh, great pilot, amazing pilot. Um, he found a way through, but he wouldn't tell us, and then he got taken. Taken? Yeah. By, by who? Uh, by the, the people who run this place. The Canning oh. Man? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, the, the McCoans, uh, uh, Canicus and that. Damn it. What's the pilot's name? Do you know? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Um, his name is uh, Fred Ward. Fred Ward. Sounds like and... pompous ice. Right. <laughs> Let's end things there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> is that man still screaming, by the way? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes. I imagine so. <laughs> yeah. Just a casual well. conversation is going on as he's yeah, like, right. Uh, like I'm just, just he's like, okay. Uh, violence is uh, uh, violence is very common in these. Drop my yeah. chopper on his face. Yeah, it's very common. And, and his misery. <laughs> I just wanted to shut up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, All right, very good. That was episode one. I called it New Horizons because it was the beginning. Um, yeah. yeah, that was fun. Let's go around table real quick. Uh, what'd you think of the episode and uh, your little outros? Uh, let's start with Allie. Hello, uh, I'm Allie or Ali Zora. I'm a cosplayer and a digital artist. And uh, I really liked this, uh, how this one. I mean, I, I'm still very new to it. I'm not I, I i feel like i'm not participating as much yet because i'm still trying to learn and get a feel for how this whole this universe works but as we go on i'm really excited to see like how everybody develops in the story so yeah all right good 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 hippie what Hi, do you think I'm crazy hippie 69 uh i'm a variety caster on twitch um you'll find me on my channel <laughs> Uh, and, uh, I had fun. I killed things and stole things and broke things. <laughs> I all around had a good old time playing an old concussion and smashing and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm happy. <laughs> I hope to do his arm off. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. <laughs> all right, good, good, good. Bobby. What's up, guys? I'm Bobby here on Twitch. I stream sometimes over twitch.tv slash Bobby. Follow me there. Follow me on Twitter at Iron Chef Bob. Uh, this is a really fun episode. I can't wait for next week. 40K Universe is insane. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can't wait to fully dive in and get through this breach. Hopefully next week. Yes. Thank you so much, Sheepy. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Sheepy, thoughts, intro, outro, whatever. Hey there, guys. I'm Sheepdog. And yeah, no, this was uh, because we got a couple of new people to the crew and a couple of new people to uh, new ish to 40k. Uh, I wanted to kind of ease us in, like take it easy so you can get acclimated and this kind of stuff. Also, we're missing McLoken, who mm -hmm. is indeed, if you're wondering, Fred Ward. Yeah, which, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> pe people. <laughs> Wait, people, what? Yeah. The pilot, right? Imagine if we didn't yeah. come back for him and we ended up Oh my god, him. no way. Yeah, he is friend yeah, so uh you uh Bobby and Ali, you won't know this. There was a NPC character in last uh in the last season of Dark Heresy called Fred Ward, uh who was a pompous ass and he got killed on some random world, random agri world, doing a job. Yeah. And they found him, he was dead, they hated him. I and didn't you didn't, but uh, <laughs> but Met Meta and Vandy absolutely despise me. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, I've been in talks with McBloken, and all I can say for now is his character's name is Fred Ward. <laughs> That's great. So, okay. yeah. All right. It's going to be interesting when you guys meet him. <laughs> that is interesting. Um, oh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, if you do exclamation point sheepy for me, Renaticus, that also gives his YouTube. Or you guys can find more of Sheepy's YouTube stuff, which is highly the recommended. Character, character creation yes. for that, uh, for this, is, yes. uh, is on my channel. Yeah, so. the character creation is on the YouTubes, not my channel, but on his. Um, as for me, I'm Metamancer. I do exclusively roleplay on my channel, as well as some other people's channels. I just finished the finale for The King's Hustle on Encounter Roleplay, so you guys can catch up on that on YouTube as well if you want to. Um, if you want to see me doing more of that, there is a tweet out there. Uh, I got to go look for it, but uh, retweet it so that the publishers know you guys want more of that content. Um, other than that, I love this episode. I love that I get to play an alcoholic rogue trader. Uh, <laughs> I really like that she can down orc grog without issue. I think that's fantastic and wonderful, even if the orc hates it. Um, yeah, I'm very oh. excited to see what happens. Uh, she's obviously very flippant about a lot of things and very carefree attitude on a lot. Um, I'm interested to see what happens when she gets into space, in, into like proper void, and like whether her personality changes at all. When, you know, like, I, yeah. I'm wondering whether she's really drunk right now. 
because she's bored on the station and she wants to get out and go in. Like, you know, so yeah. that's going to be interesting. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how things develop for her. Um, and, yeah, I'm super excited about it. So next week we'll be back at 6 p.m. Central once again um, with another episode. McLogan should be back by that point as well. And so we'll go and apparently rescue his character from Canny. Fred Ward. Yeah, we're going to rescue Fred Ward from Canny. It's going to be great. Maybe. (laughs) Um, Anyway, so thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. And uh, we hope you have a fantastic evening. If you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, like, whatever it is. The stupid bell. I don't even know. It'll be great. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.